Ladies and gentlemen, the day has finally come. Welcome to the Tuesday Cash Study Session, where we will do tons of interesting self-improving poker work, including working in the GTA as a trainer, going over hand histories, and telling bad beat stories. And if you enjoy this, please like and subscribe below. Thank you. How did I do, guys? Did I sound like I was really a uh, YouTuber? <laughs> did I pull oh, it off? Yeah. Did I pull off the roof? Yeah, you're, you're getting you're getting there. <laughs> um, okay, let's do some, a little work with the trainer, and then we'll go to hand histories. We won't do much. I will share my screen. Share my screen. This one looks good. Yeah. Let's do that. All right. So, can you guys see my screen? Yes. Yep. So this is. Uh, so the way I set this up is, I think it's going to go pretty fast, but it's kind of fun. This is like. Unusual hands, raise call, squeezes, limp flip ISOs, four bets or five bets. Very few of these hands will go pro slot, but it's kind of fun. And I think it's kind of a new feature for GTA Wizard to have these different settings. So let's try this. Can we um, add like 200 big ones deep as well? Like as an option? Sure. Why don't we do 100 yeah. for a while and... Yeah, okay. can you like mix both of them? I'm not sure. I think you can. Yeah, yeah I, I kind of like the 200 uh, a little bit more too, but yeah, let's do both. Because like where I struggle a lot is like sometimes on rush where like you can uh -huh. be like 500 deep or something. I think, mm, is it? Okay, it looks like you it's can't. Either... Yeah. Yeah, okay, never mind then. We could do it later. I, ha I have some, some of the 200. Yeah. Sure. All right, yeah, let's, that's yeah, fine. Let's, let's do it later. Let's start with, yeah. Okay, let's do it. Um, so we uh get three bet by the big blind. I assume we call here. What do you guys think? Yeah, I think we call. It's probably gonna fall bet like ten percent of the time, but I would never do that in game. Mm, oh, it's yep. folding some. Wow, well, that's that's mm. yeah. I mean, usually when people free bet from the big blind against under the gun, it's like it's like it's very strong range. People don't right. find the bluffs. But like from a theory, yeah. See, look, if I mean, this is honestly, if this is marginal in theory in game, maybe you just fold. Think so? Yeah. So, mm. um, well, let's look. So we got each two raise, three yeah, bets in the big this, blind. Let's, let's look at this look three, at it. three so, bet. Yeah, it's gonna so be like range, kings plus yeah, queens. Yeah. So his range is very polarized, as it should be in theory in the big blind. Um, to generate folds. And he's ending the action, so no yeah. behind. But I think in reality, if we look at what a human's three bet range is, it's not going to really possess yeah, as many of these. Suit of connectors and the king x, queen x, and maybe not even some of the ace x. A lot less of these. Uh, suited, yeah. And Honest, yeah. a lot less of these. Honestly, I feel like it. Oh, is it. The solver said Jax is. Okay, yeah. Okay, now let's see what. Yeah, because yeah. like, they're just not finding the bluffs, man. No one's doing yeah. the king five suited. That's the face you're going to make when you try to four bet this range. Yeah. Um. So. Yeah. And, so then we go to our defense. And even, range. even in high rate games, because sometimes I use the fifty NL GG charts. I don't know if you've looked at them. Um. But like, there's a higher rate on GG, so sometimes queens is supposed to flat even more than it is there from the big blind. Um. Yeah, look at this. Um, so yeah, this is uh jacks are indifferent. Yeah, pure calling queens, but for the most part. Yeah, pure calling queens for sure. What I mean, this is that? all about yeah. I think a lot of this these hands are all about if he's gonna pay off with his aces. Oh and people, thirteen percent yeah. of the time you hit yeah. your set. Yeah. I think these become more valuable. I mean, I mean, all if pocket pairs play the same fold here. Aces. I mean, right. jacks, jacks, reduces all play the same here, pretty much, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Let's see at two hundred, maybe it, it wants to call some of those pocket pairs a little more. Um, yeah. So, what are you guys doing in yeah. in game? Are you folding jacks or calling? 
Uh, I usually always cool, but like now looking at this, like I, it's probably like if you fold, you probably save yourself a lot of pain. Um, but yeah, two hundred it cools more because I guess you get more implied odds. I mean, it's about the same. Look at a big but blind it... range here. I wouldn't be surprised if mm -hmm. Queens goes up in frequency or flat in here. Uh, uh, it looks course. like it does a bit, yeah, because you're deeper it's... stacked. It's going to be a little bit player dependent, but I mean, in game even against the maniac, I mean, they should not be going too wild. They're not going to be anywhere close to solid, right? But yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah notice how game... notice how from the big blind queens like free bets a bit less at two hundred. That's because you're not really that happy. You're not really happy getting two hundred big blinds in pre with queens. Yeah, I think generally in theory the value of big pairs here go down the deeper you are. That yeah, is correct. So this is something I've been trying to implement in my game more recently, just like flatten queens in the big when when I'm just like super deep with someone because like it can just like get say I bought a free bet queens in and get four bet by under the gun. It's just a disaster. Look at the four bet size when you use it at uh, two hundred. Yeah, yeah, can you see the four bet when deep stacked and see what queens does here? Like, what, like I guess you cool, but it's probably like not. Yeah, see, it makes him fold. You know, you're in different AF. Yeah, so. Uh, I wonder is... if you're blocking. I wonder if they consider ace queen alpha. Because this is stuff I'm trying to cut out of my game. Like, there's too many times where I'm getting like a hundred, hundred and fifty big blinds in with ace king, and I just like run into kings and aces way more than pocket queens. You know. Well, one option is to play Russian cash and to. I mean, one option is to play Russian cash and to uh, rat hole. What's that? So rat holing is, um, I guess the right politically correct term is to reset your stack to focus on playing a hundred big one strategy. So um, when you get up above one hundred fifty or one hundred thirty big ones, you you stop playing, and then you come back with a hundred big ones. So then can you're you can you focused. can you do, can you do that? I haven't tried it. Like, can you like just leave and then just come back with a hundred bigs? Um. Yes, it's frowned upon. Um, it's probably it depends on the site. It might be against tournament service. Some sites it's not. Some sites it is, but it is a rule that is rarely enforced. Yeah, because because I play because I know if you play live, you you have, there's usually a cooldown right when you leave. Um, yeah, it's not and, you're do live. and then I yeah, have a like club. I minutes. play I play club GG private games as well, and like. If you leave the table, when you come back, you have to come back with the same stack that you left with. Yeah, it's not gonna work. So it works. Hey, great. I haven't tried. I haven't tried it on Club GG though. I just stay on the same. Yeah, I, did, I mean, I... it's something that you you're gonna do. In I do it. To be honest, I do it when I'm playing. Um, I play on ACR. I play blitz on ACR, and if I get above 140 big blinds, I'm leaving because yeah, yeah. I want to focus on the strategy of 100 big blind stack. Yeah, yeah um, that's when I that's when I struggle when like because like sometimes on rush I like grind up a stack to like five hundred bigs, and then occasionally I'll play against someone who's also that deep, and it it can be a bit of a problem. So everything changes at five hundred bigs, right? So you're um, four bucks. Well, four that's bucks where all the money is, though. So you want to learn how to play deep stacks because people will make idiotic mistakes, right? <laughs> People who would never ever consider playing five ten, they'll sit with four thousand dollars at a one three table. Mm. Yeah, that happens. So that that's where the money is. So you want to learn. Like last weekend, I was sitting at forty one hundred dollars at a one three table, and there are people with like three thousand dollars on the table. Yeah, I, I know so, it's here. Like these people would never consider playing ten twenty or twenty five fifty. Yeah, yeah. But they'll sit there. <laughs> With their three thousand dollar stack at one three. Yeah, I know it's in one two here in London. Sometimes you get some regs they'll buy in for a thousand pounds in the one two. Yep. Um, but yeah, uh, but like it's just like I I've really been trying to hone in on this deep stack play because um, you know you just have to fold big hands when all the money goes in, you know, and it's hard to fold like trips or like a bad flush. Um. Yeah. Hey Derek, yeah, how you doing? Yeah, good, I guess... good. I had, I had the best session with uh, one three ever, um, because I was in uh, Niagara Falls along the line of the eclipse, and there were ten times as many tourists in the city 
Ah, because it was long. Ah, okay? interesting. So I've never seen such a influx of tourists in my life. So, um, so I just ran to stack up the to like all twelve hundred big blinds. Nice. And but... uh, I would have stayed there more, but like I started to get tired and make mistakes, so I. So... Right, twelve hundred big blinds. It's hard yeah. to carry that many chips. I mean, you get really tired. Yeah. Pardon me. So heavy with that many with twelve hundred big blinds. It's very hard to continue because you can't carry that many chips. It's so heavy. Oh, I was, I was, I had purple chips. I had uh, like, you know, like five hundred dollar just... chips on a one three table. I'm just Excuse me, sir. I like chips. to use this wheelbarrow to get my chips or to get my money out of the to my car. Thank you. Dealer wheelbarrow, <laughs> please. All right. Um, All right. So, so I, cool I made a joke. Vote. Dealer wheelbarrow, please. <laughs> All right. Should we move on? Try yeah, a couple cool. more and then we'll go to hand histories. Yeah. Cool. Fold the jacks then. Yeah. Tight fold. Tight fold. Okay. We called here. Ooh, uh, we he... did call, didn't we? He checks to us. Interesting that he checked. Do you ever check back here? I don't. Um, I don't think so. Uh, um. Well. Well. Can. I don't know. Can they be trapping with aces with the ace of? Yeah. Ace? It's like, like the only I hand I can think of. I see people. The thing is here. Like I like if I've done this in game where I had a similar spot, and then I'll bet the jacks, and I get raised, and it's just a fucking horrible spot. Just raise large I enough think, where they can't raise you. I think. I think we're gonna bet more with the spade i think he's gonna mix that i think he's gonna check at some frequency if i had to guess I and this is so. we're against the polarized like, range why don't, we, why don't we pick one person to to play this and then we'll and then we'll talk to the person uh lewis you want to play this one just play this one yeah one. so what would gto do uh i think would i think gto would just bet one third eight orange a lot of yeah. checking a lot of checking yeah same EV. Uh, I I've changed my play so I'm like betting a quarter plot all the time. Like I, I bet frequently and small. Yeah. So uh, um like I've really changed my the way I play thanks to this group. So I don't know. Oh, but I, the... No, go ahead, I'm sorry. I mean I, I think it comes down to the people you're playing with. I mean, some people are just inelastic to sizing. And a quarter and a third is not really going to matter to them. I, would, I don't play much live, but I would imagine it's very similar. It's more the case live where maybe people aren't as attuned to percentage of stack that you're betting. The, the thing is with live as well, um, people raise bigger, so the pot's usually bigger, so then like it's easier to get the money in, right? So then you can size down a bit more. Yeah. Because yeah. Cause online, people are raising to like 2.4x. But I imagine live people raising like four or five x free, right? Yeah. What about in your game, Jack? Do people raise to four x or two x? Oh, we lost him. Um, all right, let's do another one. Yeah. yeah. So, so uh, uh, what's your opinion on? Do you guys think that people are getting just a little bit more out of hands online rather than live because you know you can't see anybody's face, so you don't have that emotion factor say it again what was the question do you think people are getting more out of hands online hand. with uh, you know, three bet plus and etc i think people are, are a little bit more wild live i think people get get their gamble mm. i think generally people get to gamble on more live yeah online yeah. people yeah. just play like the charts basically most people Oh, uh, okay, because people see so many hands and they're supposed to be better than live players. It, in, yeah, in general, online players are better, so you, you'd want to play a more fundamentally sound. Like, I'm just playing a very GTO strategy with some exploits where I'm raising wider from late position because it's rushed, mm. so people have already folded. Um, yes. And, uh, yeah, okay. I, I'd fold here. I'd even fold just if it's just the color phrase. I'd probably fold, but I don't know if that's correct. Oh uh, yeah, this is like here's yeah. the range. Because I've moved on from over from tournaments, my big blind defense is um that that's where I've really tightened up because I know it's just a bit quite a bit different. You need like a suited hand, like a, a like one which can make straights and flush and good flushes mainly, right? Yeah, I think this yeah. is going to change a lot depending on rank, but at fifty and L, yeah, I mean, really, 
our only kind of speculative hands are coming from suited connectors, suited gappers, which are mixing, and then this mix of king X. But the important thing to take away is we're always calling our suited ace X that can make the nuts. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know what's what's doing more of the queen 10 than king 10. I would change that. I think I'm a bit wide here. Like, I think I'm calling the king 5, king 4 suited. King, I don't think... Queen 8 suited. Yeah, I mean, those are obviously 0 yeah. EV, so... All right, one more, and then we'll try someone else. Um, okay, yeah. Next hand. What am I doing here? Um, so I think got... I, th I think this is, like... I think GTO will mix cool here, like, 20% of the time. But I think it's mostly fold. I think we get some 4-bets here. Yeah. Oh, no. Do you get some from this yeah. region? I'm not sure. I mean, so... I learned the poker coaching charts. Shout out to Jonathan Little. Yeah. Um, but... I think, I think, I don't think that um, GTA Wizard pulls from this region as much as the poker coaching charts. Yeah, poker so, coaching give... charts is like King Four, right? I don't know, but like, yeah, I, I, I like, yeah, I guess any option's fine. Maybe King Eight Suited Plus. plus. No, no. no yeah. not this region. What yeah. charts are you guys using? Like, I, I just use the uh, one, the free one off uh, oh. Walt Jonathan Little site. Oh, King Walt. Nine Suited. Um, so Derek, this, so you can use the you can get these for free. Uh, the Where... flip charts and GTO Wizard are free. Oh, okay. So you're just using the charts off GTO Wizard. So I think at this point, for better or worse, GTO Wizard is the default. Yeah, need, need, these charts are for fifty at like low stakes online games. Yeah, I need, these think of these as like poker stars or like um, ACR charts, I guess. Yeah, or I like mean, rake is mission charts. Yeah, rake is important. I mean, so they have a lot. So pretty much, I think all of the preflop charts of G two was it are free. So, uh, Derek, yeah, they're worth taking a look at, Derek. I mean, you can make a free account. Just take a look at them. Um, so, but I learned way back. I memorized the poker coaching charts way back when, and I'm too lazy so, and or too old to to change to. So what should I, I know is the the charts. So I should memorize the uh, GTO wizard chart. I wouldn't Are memorize. Suggesting? I wouldn't memorize charts, personally. Or, or use them, rather. Yeah, use them, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, right. I thought this was a bit weak to fall bad, um, but yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay, um, someone else now, I guess. Yeah, who wants to, who wants to do a couple? Sure. I'll, I'll go. Hey, Greg. That's great, right? Uh, all right, Colin, you're calling your three bet from EG. I think we're going to mix. I think Colin's fine, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fold. What do you I'm think, folding. Greg? I'm folding. I don't think you can fold <clears throat> on the paired board. But like, yeah, I, mean, I think. I think it's probably. But, like, yeah, I guess. We can mix yeah. in. Uh, mixes, even though it's a lot more high EB. Bastard. Anything's mm. higher than fold. Um. Ugh. I I check here. I'm probably. I mean, I don't know what the rake structure looks like, but probably oh. probably check. Is I, this I live mean, with I'm, a rake? I'm, I don't. Yeah. Well, yeah. Rake affects like when you're gonna be. What you're gonna be playing out of the small blind a lot. This is this is like a poker stars rake, like something like low stakes. It's uh, a bit like that. it's like five percent with a yeah, I think eight bitcoin cap. Yeah, I'll probably That's check here. High. Yeah, it's pretty. I think blind v blind in cash don't you raise mostly linear? Like to be honest, this is a weird node because most people just play a raise first in strategy from the mm -hmm. small blind, like because huh. like. I think you only limp like ten percent of the time from the small blind in theory, so like yeah, yeah this isn't too useful a node because most people are just gonna raise. So I guess just skip this one probably. Yeah. So people on the call, does do you guys use any limping strategy from the small blind? Uh, I don't. Um. Uh, no, no. Yeah, I don't either. And but I think that we face them, so it makes sense to look at this kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, okay. Yeah, and, if you look uh, at the ranges, small blind range is going to be like it's going to be like fifteen to ten percent limping. 
I mean, it's got to be some in some like you know like scenario where you think some somebody's gonna stack off with like top pair, and you know that the big blind's not gonna, you know, three bet you or like ISO unless he has a really big hand. Then you could it's, flat oh, sorry, pocket ahead, pairs, skip. flat pocket pairs, and next suited connectors. Maybe, maybe. So I think the argument is that it depends on rake, right? So if you look at charts, mm -hmm. the higher the rake, the more you limp mm -hmm. in the small blind. Because uh, rake becomes less and less a factor of strategy. But, you know, if you're playing 100 an hour below online, yeah, I don't think it really makes sense to have a living strategy in small blind. Also, it incredibly complicates what you need to learn. Yep. In an already incredibly complicated um, figuration. And I was looking yeah. at an exploit recently. It's just like people, don't, uh, population don't free bet enough from the big blind, blind be blind. So you can actually get a ray with like raising about like 64 percent of hands from the school blind yeah that's like an exploit and so say that again so you're um, in the small blind small blind races yeah. and yeah because because um basically the big blind don't don't free bet enough compared to gto like the uh -huh. population yeah so so like because i think in theory you're supposed to raise about 40 percent of hands from the school blind but but i think you can like raise a uh, but, but but I think the big one's supposed to free bet like sixteen percent of the time. But if you like reduce that down to like eleven percent of the time, you can get away with like raising like sixty five percent of hands from the small blind. Oh yeah, I see yeah. Your point. So look at look at a small blind range, and let's start with the small blind range, because because this spot's gonna come up loads. So this is like fifty like, percent, I think, right? Yeah. See, like ten percent cool, like I said. So like, yeah. And then like, look at the raising range from the big blind. Yeah, so do raise, yeah, yeah and, and then look at yeah, yeah seventeen percent people aren't raised. Oh, aren't you are not getting raised by ten five suited. I'm sorry, it's just not happening. <laughs> you're, so you're then, not... so the adjustment then, well, the first adjustment we talked about was that you can fold greater than what the chart so in a small bond, right? So you, Maybe. so if you raise, raise yeah, then our defense yeah. here is kind of wide, mm -hmm. but. Uh, so the yeah. first adjustment would be that this number maybe should go down by five percent. We cut out ten nine suited defense, ten eight suited defense, king five. Well, that's a that's a four bet bluff. I don't know. Like we fold out probably then we begin folding out queen nine suited, jack nine suited. Mm -hmm. Right. So our, our reaction to this more linear range. Yeah, I mean, I I want to be that we are defending uh, less. Yeah, I want to know. I want to know that the reg. I want to know I'm up against a good reg before I like, you know, four bet the king five suited here. Blind be blind. But I'm not quite clear on the adjustment you're talking about, Lewis. And it talked about three betting more, so that's fine. No, I, no, I was talking about the see the small blind. It raises 50, 40 percent of the time. I yeah. was saying that the big blind's not going to find when you raise the big blind's not going to free bet seventeen percent of the time. Yeah, it's so going to be. So, this is a very obviously this is a this is the most. Polar three yeah. bet ranging. Cash so, yes, so that means but this is much that, more linear in population. Yeah. Yeah. So, so if they're not going to free bet enough, um, you're going to gain more EV by raising more. Raising gonna... more where here? Oh, in small blind. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was talking. So about. then the argument is instead of, well, let's ignore limping, which I think is not a strategy that's profitable. In... Yeah. Well, I'm sure it's profitable because the solver would do it. But so, it's incredibly complicated. In so, so I'm saying instead of be, uh, raise first in, say, 50% of hands, like yeah. if we, um, you can raise first in uh, 65% of hands. I see your point. Yeah, I think that so, makes sense. The question now so, becomes what part of this region do you So, So, uh, so yeah, so, so I'm raising all suited tens, all suited jacks, and then like down to like king four suited, and then like queen seven, I mean, uh, king four off, and like queen seven... Um, I should probably expand a bit more. I think I should do like queen six and like jack seven, but like you can probably do like offsuit sevens and suited tens and suited. You probably want to expand more on your off uh, suited side, to be honest, because they can make stronger hands than the offsuit. Yeah, I like that. Um, yeah. So so I, think, I think expand I think down ex here. Yeah, I think expand the suited hands and expand like the offsuit kings because they have a good blocker. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Sorry, I just joined. Lewis, do you play a mixed strategy? Do you have limps in the small blind, or are you exclusively RFI or fold from the small uh, blind? I raise or fold. 
Okay, understood. Um, yeah. So, so for my stats from this, uh, um, so from my stats on cash, I'm raising fifty seven percent. Raise first in fifty seven percent of the time from the small blind. Right. And okay. You play. You play one two. No, no. I play t uh, tenor now. Oh, okay. Um, and what pairs are you folding? Are you starting to raise, let's say, um, nines plus, eights plus? I mean, excuse Perfect. me. Um, um, I mean, are you talking about blind versus blind? Yeah. Or, okay, then you could pretty much do any pair, right? Yeah. Any raising, pair? Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Another hand. Oh, well, let's go through this. So, Greg, you were working on this, right? Nope. Who's working on this? I, I was just kidding. Uh, yeah, it was. Um, um, okay. Yeah. So check. All right. So we check. Checks back. Uh, check. Interesting. Mm hmm. What you gonna do, Solver? B one. Oh, damn the option. <laughs> nope. Yeah. I'm out of. I'm. I'm uh, out of line. It's fine. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's, we're okay. I check. Come on, King Nine. Let's go. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right, another Badge. one. It's fine. Badge. One more. Okay, you've got three bet by the button with your sixes. Uh, I probably call. Yeah, I think this mixes as well. Yeah, as well. yeah. Flag, yeah. yeah. Hey, let's let's let well, Greg work for this hand. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so call cool, yeah. We did not get the dream flop. No, it's fine. Check, check. He's gonna bet this high frequency. So, I would imagine we see a small bet here. Oh, come on, sorry, you can do it. Is this a range bet? Hey, puppy, here? I would imagine so. We can look at yeah. it. Um, what are you doing here? Uh, shit. Probably folding, to be honest. Um, yeah, I think what? I think we're gonna have folds. Yeah. I think call may be part of this. Um, sure. I, I think it's probably mixing. Um, I think that like it, it like for me to continue, this really depends on my opponent. Um, uh, yeah. What would Solva do now? But uh, probably call. Well, let's so, just look at this range versus range, right? Look. So yeah. I think that I think we're gonna mix calls here. Because yeah. he has range bats and because we have back doors. Yeah. Sure. I mean, it's a really shitty, it's a very marginal spot, but I mean, I think you have to. I am totally wrong. So, I'm, I'm, I'm shocked that there's 0% calls there. That's very surprising. All right. Yeah. So, we'll, so we'll not. I think your line. Yeah, I'm surprised. Reasoning is sound. All the time. Is it because the uh, button is. Wait, uh, the button, the button's range has a lot of king x like kings and, over and... Yeah, he's also got a lot of unpaired overs too, though. It's it's good. It's he's weak enough where you can call one. I think I'm surprised. I'm shocked that was zero percent, but fair enough. Uh, yeah, let's, let's go. Do a couple more? Sure. Let's see um, later. I will. Oh man, this is kind of gross. Um. His so his his range is so wide to three beta, so it's like kind of marginal. Just fold. I think my, I'm gonna just fold my offsuit here. I'll call suited. Yeah, this is I a fold. think Solver jams here at some frequency, doesn't it? Does some mm, crazy uh, jamming here. I mean, I'm no. folding end game, but I th no, I, I don't think swear so. I've seen some jamming here before. I think you're thinking about Ace King. I think this no. is probably more likely a four bet bluff. It could be. It's not going to shove think, this. I think there is a frequency. I think there's a frequency of a four bit bluff here. Um, it's just I. My problem is is that like if I we don't really make the nuts from our uh, our offsuit side, so I'm just probably folding. Yeah, the re reverse implied odds are horrible here. So yeah, I'm on. I'm is, on board with a fold. This is a fold. I think. I, I let's we'll look and see where our four bit bluffs come from. But I think this this is this seems like a good four bit bluff candidate. Mm -hmm. It's got really good blocker properties. I think there's a four bet bluff yeah. more in the cutoff, but yeah. well, yeah, I think well, I fold here because that's what my charts yeah. taught me. But I think, I think yeah. GTA Wizard does four bet bluff. I'm not sure if it does from this. Uh, I can. Number. I think there's also possibly a smattering of call two. To be fair, 
No, I think Carl's no. really. Colin play. seems really, um, really you, wonky you here. You, you don't in cash. You don't play offsuit hands against a free bet, unless it's like Ace King or from. Okay. So we get I some was... four bet boss here. Yeah. All right. Um, so I was... fold. But the problem with this hand is that uh, in cash, it has significant reverse implied. Mm. Absolutely. So that's what is driving this. All right. Cool. So, King, you want to do it. a couple? Sure. All right, King, you're next. Yeah, yeah I, think he preferred to, I think he preferred to four bet ace queen off in that spot. I would four bet ace queen off. I would four yeah. bet. I would four bet ace queen off for sure. You've got a UTG open, small blind flat, and you're in the big blind. I mix here, but I think raising's probably more interesting. So let's three bet. That's interesting. I don't. You might I get mix. some. Get That's in. Well, get in with your bad self. Now I'm curious where our four bet our four bet environment is. Our four bet range is. Yeah, I mean, I'm not folding. I'm not finding I'm, that. I can't believe that fold is that high. That's shocking to me. It's so, going to be a defend or a three bet. We'll look at the region. So we are going to we're going to fold a lot down here, right? Mm -hmm. In this region, because mm -hmm. it just um, again reverse implied, and we can't make the nuts as often. Yep. And then yeah, we're going to sure. expand. Notice what's happening here is now we're expanding in this region a little. bit. Very yeah, pure calling though, which makes yeah. sense. All these suited one gappers, and then um, queen queen off is where our four bets are. Where are our four bet bluffs coming from? So king queen off clearly is a four bet bluff. Ace jack off, king jack off, suited kings, queen nine. So we got a lot of four bet bluffs with all that dead money yeah. in here. You can probably like simplify this by like just four bet bluff, like three bet bluff in like just king queen off. And then, like, I don't know, 7 6 suited. How does our strategy change uh, if with or without the uh, small blind cold collar? How does the um, the range change? Yeah. yeah. And, and, yeah. Okay, and well, let's take a look of... at it now, right? So, what? Well, let's look do, do it this way real quick. If small blind this... flats, I'm probably three betting at the same frequency, just looking to squeeze. Because that's mm. a very good question from I think so. our friend. I think you Our raise you I think you free bet less because you're you're just gonna I think the free bet will go down if the small blind doesn't call. Doesn't oh. call or does call? Yeah, because you're closing the action and your yeah, it goes down. So what? So what? You, sorry, that. if the if the small blind doesn't call, your three bet goes down. Yeah. It oh, went okay. From seven okay. To, yeah, it went from seven to because we're closing the action, we can just see a flop while while okay. yeah. I mean, we were closing the action anyway, but it's just um, it's more, so we're it's folding. A, it's a mix for me. So multi way we're to win. folding less, right? So we're folding like uh, no, we're folding more. Sorry, we're yeah. folding more, and then we're raising less. Uh, we're raising more. Yeah, we're raising we're more, more. Well, there's more out there to win, right? Yeah. So we're going from like five point five percent or whatever, five point six to seven point two. So we got like two percent higher raises. And, yeah, and the thing is, when we raise and the under the gun folds, but if the small blind continues, we're going to be in position on the small blind. Yeah, absolutely. Small blind shouldn't really have. So, no, I like a three blind. Raise. The thing, yeah. the nice thing about this is once we raise, if we get through UTG, small blind's going to have a very small calling range. Oh, wait, I changed it. Raise, call. Yeah. Raise. UTG folds. Yeah, he doesn't really have he has he everything. <laughs> so we get we get all the dead money. We get it all and we get it all. Keep in mind at this high rate environment, we get it all without paying. Yeah, right. He's just kind of four betting very linear, jacks, queens, ace king. Okay, so what did you do? What did you want to do on this one before we look I three bet. I three bet. Okay, raise. Okay. Let's hope you get it through. Yeah. I th I think Oh, oh I'm happy oh. to play. Post. Oh well, that's a fold, obviously. This is but, interesting. Yeah. What does he do with what range is? Yeah. Um. Yeah, the thing is, is very the, top of range. Yeah, the, the thing is that the, the, usually in my online games, if someone flats the small blind, they're usually uh a more like recreational bad player. I suppose people yes. are, like free bet. Correct. So. Yep. This back it's, jam you... is so unusual. Yeah, and that small blind flat's going to be a lot of uh, pocket sixes, pocket sevens, pocket yeah. fives, pocket eights. 
or just anything. Yep. They just want to see a flop, like, and they're like, oh, half the big blood's already in there. You know. Oh yeah, the weaker players, Queen Ten offsuit, Queen Jack yeah, offsuit, absolutely, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So you just like benefit from raising. You know, when you raise the King Jack off against the recreational, sometimes that's for value as well. He's got a cool words, you know. Mm -hmm. King, you, you've got Seven, a here. 14, 21, two. I'm just wondering if it's raise or jam. I don't at this at the stacked up. Sorry, you know, like a uh, deep stock's a little weird for me. Um, do I jam? Do I? I think uh, raise twenty. Yeah, I think you're gonna. So, uh, what are you? What are you guys for think? an excuse to jam here? But I don't think that you ever give him the right price to call with anything that you're ahead of. So I think so raise I, twenty is the only. I think play. you're gonna. You might. I think in this early position, early position. I think this is a fold, but I'm not sure. Let's look. That seems awfully nitty to me. Well, Ace Queen has an issue this early because it's got. Well, you five. might know the hijack three bet range better than I do in these cast ranges, so we might be we're either four bet bluffing or we are folding. Okay. Okay. Yeah, the Eight. issue with this hand, uh, this is one of the. Well, it's sixty forty. Issues. Yeah, this is the issue with this hand is that. Um, well, this hand is very surprising for tournament players that we play this way in early position. This is. I would argue maybe one of the most surprising hands for tournament players. Yeah, I would. When they're say looking so. at preflop. Yeah. Um, and it's it's reverse implied against his. Even though you're blocking it, it's reverse implied odds against his ace king is describing it. I'm still happy to. Uh, I'm st sorry. What is this a four bet from me? Yeah, I'm still happy to four bet here. Well, let's let's take that line. See what happens. Maybe because he's what king jack suited, king queen suited, pocket tens, pocket nines, pocket jacks. I'm happy to play against all that. Okay, let's, no, let's no, no, no. When you four bet the ace queen here and you get five bet, you fold. Correct. But you just yeah. said you're happy to play for all of it. No, 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 no. Sorry, I'm happy to play like post flop. I'm happy to play oh, okay. against those combos. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. I, I am folding versus a. No, I am folding <laughs> versus a five bet. Yeah. Okay. All right, four bet, and you got a very interesting flop. Which yes. So okay, two spades. I'm holding the spade. Got the queen of hearts. Just sizing here. Uh, 40, 51 point five, fifty six, uh, yeah, bet ten point four, twenty five percent. Okay, I like it. Yeah, I think we're gonna see bet a lot here. I think I think often in four bet pots we we see bet a very large portion of our range. This final wants to go bigger, but this is fine. Okay, I was looking for an excuse to go bigger, but I'm just looking at the uh, like what that's going to make the pot and what we have behind here, and I'm just kind of looking at geometric sizing on later streets, and I thought that uh, the ten point four might be better, but I think we can call this a win. I would use the sizing. So okay, okay. I okay. think people are more are inelastic here. Yeah, sure. It's, it's the same. Okay, sure. All right, now this is interesting. Uh, fuck Jam. This, this Rip it. Spot. All no, in. I don't think you get to jam when the flush comes in, do you? Yeah, you have the ace of spades. I'm ripping it all day. All I think day the long. I think no. the um SRP is going SPR is going to have something to do with it. I think it. We it, we're more or less 1.0 SPR. What? Yeah, that's that's, gonna... that's insane. That's insane to me. Now I am happy to get it in here, hundred percent of the time. Um, let's look. At... No, but but a, a heuristic is usually when the flush completes, you bet small. Because it's sure, like, but okay, but that yeah. okay, it matters a lot if you hold the ace of spades, though, in that heuristic. That is a that is a very key I'm, card to be holding. I'm not sure I understood though. what I just saw. Like, what, what it said, part? There, there's zero all in, but it's pretty much all you know, bet 20 or so. Yeah, I'm wondering what's driving that. Are you just trying I, to extract I, value I, I from like, I'm, yeah, I don't understand like, that. I'm thinking that solver is just trying to extract maximum value because you have substantial equity. You have to be an equity favorite here, even though you are only holding ace high. On well, the let's turn. break it I down think here. You, I think let's you're still an equity favorite. Bit. All right, so let's start. Let's start here. Um, For that reason, though, I'm happy with a jam. So we're going to start here with ranges, right? So you get this flop. You are the four better and the four bet caller. So these are our ranges. So he's got a super dense range, right? Yes. So his range is like all these blockers to your aces and kings that can make a flush. All these hands that can make um, 
I don't jam Second without the set. Ace of Spades. I will say that. Need and the then Ace he's of Spades got to jam. Aces, Ace traps at some point. So we're down to like a really small portion of the range, right? I mean, so mm-hmm. we're starting with 24 combos for the four back caller, and you've got 44 combos. So we're super dense already. Mm-hmm. 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 Um, but on this flop texture, pretty much at a toss up in equity on our range, equity versus uh, range versus range. I think this is holding the ace of spades here is absolutely key, absolutely key. I think this is where blo- uh, holding a blocker like that allows yeah, you I see to maximally point. exploit. I see your point. Um, so the one response to that would be solver is going to think about both its combo and about also its range versus range interaction. Sure. So, okay, so, so from from your mind, the reason that Solver is choosing to go for smaller sizing here, it Solver is obviously aiming to get all of the money in, right? But it's aiming to do it on the river. That's that's what I take out of yeah, this. Yeah. So wrong? let's well let's compare this to when we get to turn, we'll look at what two E sizing is, and okay. see if it matches up. And it probably is going to match up pretty close. Up. Okay. Okay. Because uh-huh. I was basically I was looking to like, I'm looking at the equity I have right now. I'm happy to get it all in on the turn. I'm happy to get a call. And it looks like Solver is just trying to extract maximum value with an extra street. Wait, you're happy That's to get take pulled? Out. You're bluffing, though. Wait, it, this is a... Yeah, with ace, ace, queen, with the ace of spades on this board, I, I will take a call all day long. Absolutely. So you're, behind, you're like you're 30... Behind. Yeah, you're 35% equity. That's more than enough. You're good. <laughs> 35, so, um, 38%. You're good. So the other thing to think about here is that um, according to the mm. linear equity chart, in position does have the range of uh, the nut advantage and that's going to be driven by that's going to be driven oh, by the sets yes. so these are going to be all the sets okay so let me see yeah he has more pocket tens it looks like yeah he's got all these nines tens tens that we don't have as much so you've um, also got yes. your jacks queens kings like so then we of spades so we bet here, which is fine. He calls. Then we go to the turn. The turns of three, what brings you additional equity? Here we go. Here, what's our? How has our equity changed? So our equity hasn't really changed, right? Yeah. Uh, this is not an equity shifting card. There's going to be other cards that are equity shifting, but this is not an equity shifting card. It might um, not be equity shifting. It is extremely favorable for our exact holding, though. That's true, and you're blocking him having the not flush, which is really important in this. Very yeah, that dense. ace of spades is everything in this hand, it really is. Which is really important, yeah. In this in this very dense environment. Now let's talk about why. The the question I think that a lot of people are asking is why aren't we shoving you? Why don't we just shove? That's what I'm asking. Yeah. And um, why is why is Solver choosing a different path? And, I think uh, Solver's too strong. Can I attempt to answer that? Sure, Derek, go ahead. I, I think it's because you have leverage. So um, because the threat of um shoving it all in on the river um gives you more leverage on the turn to bet 20. so even though it looks like you'd have more fold equity with uh shoving it i think um if someone sees you bet 20 they think "Fuck, the rest of it's going in on the river (laughs) So, so, yeah, if you're shoving here, you have to shove with some of your value as well, like flushes. Yeah. So so that's that's why I think, this, this is my hypothesis. I don't really know for sure. But this I conjecture that the solver is thinking, I have tremendous leverage by betting uh, 20 because it threatens to shove it all in on the river. So I get the same fold equity by betting 20 as I do betting it all in. Yeah, I think there might be something to be said for that. Now, at okay, so at the same time, I, I, I'm sorry, I, I didn't see who said it. Um, someone said you're going to be looking to shove your value combos too. Now, this obviously, if you jam a turn here, if you jam this turn, it's a semi bluff. But I mean, I think you have more than enough equity to consider this a value hand. Ace queen with the ace of spades okay. on this turn. That's a value combo in my mind. I agree that it's positive EV, but I think what we're searching for is the most positive EV. Okay. Does that kind of like we can make that distinction? Like I'm not. I agree with you that it is 
probably plus EV to shove, but I, I think. Well, that sure. Maybe I'm not finessed EV. enough to find the the small bet on the turn. Maybe. You're yeah, right. that's what we're here for. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sure. But I don't. I don't think checking is a play on this turn. Um, checking apparently oh, is a play on this turn for eighteen percent. So, Holding the ace of spades, I don't ever find a check if I have any combo with the ace of spades on this turn. Yeah, so it's a plus okay. if you played it to shove. It's just not the most profitable play. Can I attempt to answer that again? Sure. Um, see, as things get deeper, you do a lot more checking. Like sure. when you're four, five hundred, you know, a thousand yeah. big blinds deep. Yeah. Okay, right? sure. You have sure. to start adding more checks into your ranges. Like if you're coming from tournaments, right? Mm -hmm. You have to crunch your mindset. Like when you're 500 big blinds deep, there's yeah, a lot Yeah, which is very rare in tournaments, obviously. <laughs> so. Right, right. But in cash games, that's where the most, like I say, that's that's what you train for. That's the most profitable situation. Because okay. people will play 500 big blinds deep the same way they play 60. Sure. Oh, I got it in with an ace, right? Sure. And a speed draw. Right, that doesn't that that doesn't work at all. Five hundred big blinds deep. I mean, or a thousand well, big blinds deep. In my online games, when someone gets in with five hundred big blinds, it's just a nuts. But I light seven different. bet someone the other day. Yeah, well, like I mean, if I if I'm on this turn here, like you're at what sixty seven big blinds. That's effectively SPR one point oh. I'm never jamming five hundred big blinds into sixty. There's a distinction between jamming right, seventy. Right, and but 60 I'm, and I'm saying that. I'm just saying that as you move from tournaments to cash, you have to think there's there's a lot more checking. Okay, sure. Preserving That's Preserving your stack becomes like... So do you advocate a check? a little bit of it 60 deep, right? But you'll see a lot more when you get much deeper. Okay. Does that make sense? No, absolutely. But do you like a check on this turn with the ace queen oh, and the no. uh, ace of spades? I, okay. I, the more I look at it, I think I like the bet 20. Okay. Okay, sure. Sure. I can get um, on board with that. So, yeah. and Derek, also, by the way, I I really am interested or enjoy hearing your insights about live poker because okay. I have an aspirations. An I, I have aspirations to play live poker one day and get off the... the yeah, uh, you and I are online grinders. <laughs> oh, online so, streets. So maybe we could talk about like um, what... Like, I, I love live because it's so profitable. Yeah. Because it's Either. it's way more profitable, way less work, and for me, it's more enjoyable. Sure. Yeah. You need a it's lot of fun. Capital, though. You need a lot of capital to survive the swings. So, I think, like I I consider live uh, online to be like training in the gym versus you know going outside for, you know, play, to play. Yeah, that's what I a lot of live people say. I can see that. It's kind of also a different game, though. At the same time, but I do agree to some extent. I mean, the, the the I think one aspect of doing this training and playing online, if you're a live player, is that you're learning the solver baseline. Oh, training so with a solver clearly, for online is invaluable. It is absolutely essential. So oh. clearly, this is not strategy that you take to the live streets, right? But I love if you I understand this, the mechanics of why the solver is is playing this way. I would imagine it helps you understand how you're supposed to adjust your game plan. Yeah, so I, I, I just sorry, I, I I just wanted to interject with something here. So the whole point of GTO, and I think we've like hammered this in like other sessions, is to make you inexploitable, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, when you play perfect theory, um, you're essentially non-exploitable. So yeah. implementing GTO strategy into your live game is uh, highly profitable, um, yeah. especially if you're able to play um relatively perfect right so having these moments of being able to incorporate theory is invaluable as well um yeah. so yeah and the more you play out, live the more you will realize that too the yeah. more that will be pronounced yeah and the 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 biggest part of um my uh up and comments and in, in the game as of recently is not not maybe not in in cash but definitely in tournaments is um realizing that theory applies no matter what buy-in level you're at that's true that's true yep. so, there's never a bad time to play good poker good point yeah that's true um all right so i think we kind of understand why we're using the b20 here not yeah. to show yeah we get, sure we, so we let's, get let's just 
we get to have more bluffs when we go small, right? Because we got more, the, more rage. The reason why it chooses B20 is because it keeps it keeps villains bluffs in too. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. 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 Okay. So sure. we, we were not we did not get the um so now I think well, what do you think? This is your hand. I'm gonna shut up. Yeah. What, what, yeah, what no. do you think, King? Well, okay, so I was jamming it on turn because I am happy to fold out my opponent on turns rather than let them realize full equity or let myself not realize full equity and then sitting here with SPR 0 0.5 on turn and I'm kind of like supposed to jam it in here. I mean, I wouldn't have taken this line. I was getting it all in on turn with a turn S SPR 1.0 bet. But if I find myself here, I, I I feel a very strong obligation to just put the rest in with less than SPR 0 0.5. Okay. Anybody else have any thoughts on this spot? Uh, it was small bet. It was small bet uh, turn, right? Yeah, yeah. I went yeah. small bet, small bet. Yeah. Uh, B25, um, B33. The I mean, this could, like, just, this could just be all in. I also don't mind blocking here, to be honest. I don't think this is like a terrible spot to block. Um, like like all of those goofy lines could have been prevented by just jamming it on the turn too. So like I'm still a, mm -hmm. I don't like the spot at well, all. Well, so so I would argue that the turn shove, you are giving. Okay, this is my argument. This is the Jonathan Little argument, right? Jonathan Little would say if he were here, he would say, "Well, you are making your the game very easy for your opponent." Mm -hmm. Your opponent is going to fold out hands that are worse than yours, and the opponent is going to call hands that are better than yours. Well, you kind of have the perfect. You have like you have the perfect blocker combos here. He's going to be calling you with like, king ten leveling. with the king of spades. Queen. You're leveling yourself with that jack kind of ten logic. with the jack of spades. So I'm going I'm, to be very. I'm going to be very straightforward with you. You are leveling yourself with that kind of thinking. How how so? Um, because. Your opponent is not going to be nearly studied enough to know to bluff with those things. Yeah. Okay. Like, sure. But I'm I'm just I'm I'm just saying like when in this same school of thought that he had that like you are essentially leveling yourself into into a jam where you're only going to be get called by better and you're not gonna you're not you're gonna fold not... out much worse. Okay. So are you okay? King ten. He okay, king he has king 10 with the king of spades. You have ace queen with the ace of spades. Okay, he is ahead on the turn. Equity is more or less even, is it not? You are like what 43%? Something like that, 44%. That's good Shit. enough for me. Okay. I mean like I'm not looking to save myself half half of an SPR. Because I'm, you know, for forty five percent versus his fifty five percent. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. You know where so, I'm... Yeah. So okay. when we so when we bet forty seven percent here on the river, what better hands fold? Because a, a would a king would a ten fold for half board? I'm not no. sure. That, yeah. No, and it would have folded on the turn. Uh, maybe. And if not, you're ahead. I, and sorry, if not, you have substantial equity. He might be ahead, but you have substantial yeah. equity. Because because you know you're going to realize have, enough. Because he's going to have some pocket aids in his range, which just got which just like is not folded now. Yeah, the four liner is annoying. So it's like, Mike Mike's in chat here, and he makes the comment, which is astute, is that it's very far. It's very hard to find any offsuit combos that the um, villain gets to here. Th that is after we four bet. Mm -hmm. so after sure. we four bet, and we bet bet even small. It's very hard to to know what he has. That's an offsuit combo. The thing is, even like I, I think we might check here and give up. To be honest, like, I think this is a give up. Because because he because say he has pocket sevens, which he done the occasional cool with four bet with, which he decided to free bet. Like it's just gonna happen some sliver of the time. Like even seven sevens ain't folded now. That's what I'm thinking. No. Just. Or we no, can I, just, Let's I, go. Just, Let's... I just hate this line. I'm never finding myself on this river having to make this shove. And it's like, oh, yeah, okay, sure. Even if you jam turn and you fold out everything worse, that's going to call you. Who's right and we're who and who's wrong? I'm wrong oh, and the king away. is right. Well, I, I'm, I'm still not advocating that line, so don't say that I'm right. Um, so, what, so, so what do we fold when we jam here? Let's look at the range. Um, that... Very sticky king-queen. 
Wow. Yeah. Uh, that's nice, that's, nice this is, that's solver noise to be but honest. Even, okay, so even still, if you jam turn here, if he's never calling anything that's ahead of you, you are still ahead of the vast majority of his combos. That is going to be a profitable play long term. Like, yeah, you don't extract max value here, but you also don't have to make that nightmarish river decision, and you also just cash out your equity on the turn basically, and it's going to be profitable in the long run. We also kind of played the bazillion line here, um, which is a bet small. One flop, bet small on time, shuff river, even though it was only 0.5 SPR. Um, so when we jam, what are we falling out? The, the question was, we... I guess the soul is going to fold top pair sometimes. So the question so... is, what are we shoving? We should. Here? But like people, but we only have like, point. how many combos do we have at this point? We've got like yeah, two combos. Like... We've got, we've got literally six combos. Yeah. In, re in that we're actually playing this way. So and when we get got... here, we're jamming the majority of them. So we're going to yeah, have so a very large. Yeah, even no, Jax I... is checking. I yeah, hate this cool. line. So I just want to make a comment here, like about like this entire board setup line action. This is, it's kind of noise. Like, um, yeah, I don't, I don't think King Queen Rel relatively is going to be finding a call um on the flop with clubs i guess maybe it should i mean oh sorry uh, opponent I'm, my mistake. I'm talking sorry. about villain yeah my mistake i mean i guess with that small of a well yeah so the reason why it likes clubs is because you don't block any of the back doors um like you don't block hearts um so you're saying it's noise because humans won't have this call i don't think i don't do you know do you know anybody that's good that's doing i make this, this call team? i okay. make this call and fold a lot of turns I yes it, i do I mean, make that call it's a b25 size and they're in position i think most people are gonna call with a gut shot and the overs I oh, mean, it, actually, it clearly I, meets sorry. MDF. I didn't, I didn't, I haven't slept really well. Um, I didn't realize it was 10 9. Yeah. My bad. Um, yeah. there's, oh. there's a gut shot out here. I, I can't see. Never mind. It's all good, bro. Right. So, so what, what, what was he folding on the river when we jammed? Like, like top pairs? Like, uh, I think he folds eights. Oh, wait, no, not eights. No, uh, eights like, is a straight. Like, must is, he sh should be full. Oh, wait. No, it's, we're only SPR 0 0.5 at that point. I yeah, really, so, really so hate like being the, in the spot. The solvers, the, the solvers bluffing king ace queen because it's folding some better hands. So what are the better? Yeah, like so we're targeting over, uh, primarily yeah, so, queens. Queens mix, I think. But and, you're blocking all of that. And king queen is actually heroing. Well, that's a flush. Never mind. Uh, yeah. Blocking. So king queen is like the most likely hand that we fold out here. Ace queen, ace king folds. Yeah, ace king. So Ace King, there was stick, but this is interest. This is important. Um, we're blocking a lot of the Ace King fold, right? With our combo, mm -hmm. got the Ace of Spades. Yeah, for sure. So Ace of Spades is everything in this hand. So where is his threshold? So his threshold, he begins. He begins. He begins to become indifferent with queens. Jacks are <laughs> indifferent. Queens. So it's pretty much queens are his threshold call here in a okay. four bet pot in this configuration. Do people fold queens though for hot like at like for half pot? In, uh, in this... Well, Solver says you're supposed to. Yeah, for half pot, people... much less often. That's yeah. why I hate that half pot SPR zero point yeah. five nonsense when I'm supposed to be making some bluff. It's like, okay, I really don't have any fold equity here. Yeah, I mean that's probably it's probably, it's probably better against uh like. Because you're not playing fucking uh, Matthias Eisenbenger, are you? You're playing just some <laughs> random, mm -hmm. some random. So like, honestly, no, I th I think there is something in there. Just jam the turn to make it easy. Cause, yeah. Like, after all of this, I am more sure than ever that jamming the turn is the best play versus the people we play against. Because because I think if you jam the river here, uh, um, they're not river jam's the terrible. They're, they're they're not folding the king king tech. King Ten and the Queens. I don't think. No, I totally get your point about uh, jamming turn when we have an SPR of one, which has yeah. more oomph than an SPR so, uh, of so, point. Yeah, uh, I I think in your games you'll probably be better playing that jam line. But it, I mean, it, yeah, 
but like if like so but like I, I probably do need to bet small blind but then I probably just give up the river because because no one finds the fold with queens on the river for half pot man like well that's GTO if you're playing like that you're technically better than I am so <laughs> that's the GTO line yeah I mean, all right I, one more king the river yeah. or the turn jam wasn't GTO so yes sir you've got two call uh, I think this is a fold I call 1.5 okay. bigs, 100 deep. There's no way I'm folding. That's insane. That's in insane. <laughs> That's insane. No way. Um, no way. So this hand is, does it, I think the argument for this is that this hand doesn't, it doesn't make the nuts. And yes, it does all the time. You make Broadway all the time. Are you kidding? Well, I'm not kidding about the fact that it's, it's very hard to make. Oh. And yeah, okay, not a flush. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Two pairs straight. Not about the fact no way. That your pairs are going to be having kicker problems. Yeah, your pairs are nonsense. You're playing for two pairs and uh, straights here. Okay. All right, well, let me ask you this one question. Can you understand why Solver falls? Hold. I, I do, but it's stupid. Okay. I respect yeah. your opinion. I don't. <laughs> I, 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 I so violently disagree with that that I I, 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 I disagree with calling. Me. I fold one game. You want to fold, Derek? So oh. I beat him. I, I I muck this all day, every day. For one point five big gun, blinds, multi way under the gun. Bats. What's his yeah? Name? You're 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 calling to make you know two tens on the flop, two jacks on the flop, jack ten on the flop, or an open ended straight draw. And realize you're straight on the turn or the river. It's going to be a profitable hand for you. No, so. it isn't. I'll take that. I'll, I'll take that bet against that all day, every day. Okay. So yeah, well, let's not, let's, wait, wait, wait. You are you are correct according to Solver. So I'm the one arguing for a zero percent line here. <laughs> yeah. So let's uh, let's move on because um, I, I think the only the only piece of takeaway from this is that Solver has taught us that our unsuited connectors have a lot less value at this stack depth, especially in this region. Sure. And the reason is because this region has got kicker problems and it's going to be dominated when it gets pair often. Sure. And I, uh, for me, I have, I have station problems, which I'm oh, working I will, on. I will so fold this top region is this very, very no dangerous problem. for me because um, sometimes it's hard for me to Fold a pair, which is see, going uh, to be dominated and have kicker issue. No, you see, I'm happy to play this post because I have no problem folding top pairs in uh, yeah. spots where that's, it makes that's sense. That's very to. important. So that's that's the reason that it, it is chosen to. Um, I, just I understand data why data it's data. doing it, but in practice, there's no way I'm folding that in game versus. I just put my, my database game. up and my Jack 10's losing uh, in my, overall in my database. I'm profitable jack down to Jack 8 in my database, Jack 8 offsuit. So losing eight dollars for me. Like, how deep is that though? That's like hundreds of thousands of hands of sample. Oh, oh what stack depth? A uh, hundred plus. Okay, well, I don't. You must be playing in soft games then. Oh yeah, I'm in an Ontario only field. I can bully yeah, yeah. So every person at the table. GTA Are you playing on stars? No. Uh, GG mostly. Stars has geolocation issues. I play for five minutes and I get booted, saying I'm not in Ontario. It's infuriating. Um. Yeah, I'm in Ontario too, but I'm playing uh, Stars. I went out and bought a uh, USB. Uh... Stars is the softer field. That is the softest site. If you're not getting booted, yeah, saying yeah. that you're not in Ontario, you know that's where you should be do? playing. Can I make a suggestion? Sure. Um, go get a USB. Uh network uh vpn no, no 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 just a u just a plain dumb usb it's usb thing that you can stick into um okay into your uh usb on your computer okay. and then that'll keep the stars geolocation happy That's wait weird. what oh i okay so Why is it then because then you have um um like a constant uh, geolocator dedicated blah, blah, blah. Sorry, what do you mean? What type of USB device? Yeah, like it yeah. broadcast my location or something? No, no. It's just it's just a, it's just a, like a little, the thing is, 
The thing that I have is called TP Link. It looks like a small thing that's like. Oh, it's oh you know what that is? TP Link is another. TP Link. Um, that's I'm a. Writing this down. That's a TP Link is a um, network with Peter. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, 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 okay. okay and then, okay. You, then you get rock solid connection to their stupid geolocation. Uh, okay, widget. I'm okay. going to look into this. Absolutely, it was like fifteen bucks. Okay, buy, okay. Order one right now off Canada Computers, and it'll be there in a few days, and then you can just play in the softest field ever. Yeah, no, I'm going to test that. I appreciate I that, that. That tip helps your uh, win rate more than anything. <laughs> like, <laughs> I know. Just, yeah. Okay. Anything we won't work on today, the tip that you can get on stars and play the softest field. Uh, okay. And also pay less rate, I would assume. Um, all right, guys. So we spent an hour in the trainer. Should we continue with the trainer, or should we uh, go to Mark Tans? I've got a bunch of hands that if you guys want to laugh at me. <laughs> yeah, sure. Why don't we do? We, let's go to let's go to um, let's go to hands. So I'm going to stop sharing, and you can share your screen. Um, okay. Let me just so. figure out how to do this. I'll be back in two minutes. Okay. okay. So I'm in uh, Zoom and share screen, right? Yeah, I just have to figure out how to stop sharing. Basic, basic. Yeah, whatever. Share. You're at stop share. Maybe I hit the big red button that says stop share. That'll do it. Okay. okay. There so you go. Yeah. I just sh um, so share screen, and then you can choose share between screen? sharing an application, or you can choose between sharing your entire screen. Okay. Um, where is the share screen thing? So at the bottom there is an arrow that's green. Oh, share screen. The green share screen thing. Yeah. Okay. I have five monitors up. No, it's hard. It, it's hard to find because you have the white. And you have to look for the green kind of thing. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, you can choose to share an application or share a screen. But if you share okay. an application, if all your hand gestures are like in a browser or something, it'll do it that way. Okay. So you're sharing okay. a screen. So we're getting somewhere. Share screen. So we're not. Here we so go. Can you see are we going to get there? The easy hand replayer. Okay, cool. Now we've got sure your. Right yeah. Um, okay, now you can see it. We uh, slowly, yeah, I can see it. Now. Okay, so, so, like this hand requires a bit of setup. Okay, hold on one second. So I'm sitting like with, oh, um, sorry, Derek. Hold on one second. We're not seeing it yet. Um, so can you bring it up one more time? Um, it's in the. Uh... Like I have five monitors, right? So yeah. I think it's in the right monitor. So I think part of the issue is that your bandwidth is really low. So that might be it. There's this essentially a warning that says Derek's bandwidth is low. So it oh, might. Yeah, I have shitty bandwidth. Um, so that might be part of it. Why don't you try? Yeah, we're seeing your Discord. So why don't you try? Oh, you're showing. I'm sharing the. Might be sharing the wrong screen. Yeah. Because I have a bunch of screens. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're probably sharing the wrong monitor. Why yeah, don't so you try, instead I, I, of sharing I, I, the I, screen, Derek, why don't you try sharing that browser that the uh, Easy Read Player is in? So you can just share an application instead of sharing a screen. So if you go to share screen, uh, and then instead of saying share whole screen, just say share brow uh, okay. share application or share browser. OK, so I'm looking okay. at the Zoom. And I have a thing called share screen. Ah, that's it. You there. got it. Beautiful. So we can see it. So you see it now? Yes, yes sir. Yeah. I see pocket sixes. Maybe if you okay. can make the screen a little bigger, is that okay? Oh yeah, okay. Like I, I was trying to share one of my one K monitors, one of the this is on one of my four K monitors, so okay. hopefully you guys can see it okay. Do you yeah, want we to can see it flat? Yep. Yeah, we can see it. Can okay. anybody, everybody see it okay? Yes, sir. 1366 big blinds, pocket sixes. Yeah, 4, perfect. That's yeah. it. We got it. We're in the game. Okay, so basically, this is like the best environment I've ever been in, right? I've been grinding for a while, and I'm starting to get tired. But it's so good. Like, the Eclipse is here, and there's a million visitors <laughs> in Niagara <laughs> Falls, okay? <laughs> So my table is all 
tourists except for one guy on oh. my right and i just sat down right and he's got about a thousand big blinds too okay this so is, this is yeah, like that's that's insane. You'll amazing find a better, a you'll never find a better situation than this tourists except for one guy on my right and okay so what's the best thing to do right now what would you do now if you just sat down? Um, all right, so he's in your he's to your direct left with a with a thousand big blinds. It's folded to you. You've got sixes. Has so, it folded to us? That's not what happened. Uh, that's not what happened. I'm asking you before that. Like you just got the dealers just dealt out the cards. What's your move? With any, are you advocating like tipping okay. the dealer or something? The move is to ask for a seat change. Button. Yeah, that's what I was okay. going to. I'm, I was okay. like. We get, yeah, we don't have any, we don't want to be in the spot. Okay. okay. So we talk to this guy. Hi, how you doing? And uh, we turn, he, everything about him indicates that he's a smart pro. Mm -hmm. Okay. He's got like a thousand big blinds. He knows what he's doing. He's shuffling chips perfectly without thinking about it. Everyone else is a tourist. So he's so this game okay. is one three uncapped. Is that right? No, no. This week this game is one three three hundred. But I've got so like, you just said, he, but didn't he just? You just said that he just sat down. No, to your I left, just right? sat down because I moved tables. Oh, they let so, you keep your stack if you move tables. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. That's kind of weird. Okay. So it is kind of uncapped, right? Then, right? Cause you can... Yes, it is uncapped. It is uncapped. Well, you can only buy in for 300, but if you build it up to like. Capped is 4, the number 000. of bets that you can place. So yeah. if you build like, it up to a bazillion big bonds, you can move to another table. With, and you must bring all your chips. That's the rule. Oh, you okay. must take all your chips. Yeah, we didn't hear yep. you too well because uh, your voice went out. Can you say that again? Me? Yes. I said you must bring all your chips. Okay, must yeah. bring all your chips. Okay. 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 All right. So then, yeah, this is really nightmarish. I don't want to be in this spot. I mean, I'd actually be starting to have cold sweats, <laughs> and okay. I yeah. would get up as soon as possible. I would play in orbit. No, I you want I to play the in form. these I would play in orbit to get out. Right, because this is where you make the most money. Deep stack with a bunch of tours. So you're. Are you thinking about playing this game and just staying out of this guy's way? Are you thinking about getting up? Yeah. And walking yeah, away? I don't. Well, okay. I know this guy's smart. The table is lovely, though. Everyone else is a tourist. So mm -hmm. I have the seat change button. Let's, uh, let's vacate a few seats. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's, that's, that's basically what I think. Let's vacate some seats. So. So we have sixes out of position. <laughs> this is probably where I make a mistake. I'm I'm asking the dealer for a seat change button, and he thinks I say call. <laughs> oh. So I don't mind this call. I don't so mind. So we got a horrible flop, right? We can't improve <laughs> our hand. Well, let's but go back to pre flop real quick. Flop. Yeah. So this free pre flop, pre flop. I think a call against two. So what I'm thinking here, these guys are not as, obviously they don't have a bazillion big blinds, which reduces the value of a set, but they're Taurus. So if they have aces here and you flop a set, you're getting it all. Yep. Yep. They, they so, don't have the balls to flop. They, they're not flopping folding top pair, I assume, right? Yeah, so then I think this becomes a profitable flat. Okay. Yep. So, the dealer thought that you were just trying to call. So wait, this is an open limp, right? It's an open limp, another limp, and you're limping behind. That's yep. I'm reading this right. Yep. Are would you normally raise here? Because I'm never limping behind. I'm always making at six, seven big blinds here, maybe even larger if I'm this deep. Eight big blinds, ten yeah, big blinds. Yeah, yeah. I asked. I asked him. I asked the dealer for for the seat change button. They saw. I said call. The other guy checked, and then the dealer dealt out. This. Do you normally raise here, or do you normally call behind the oh, yeah. flatters? Yeah, I'm raising here. I'm raising. Okay, here. okay, okay, okay. So, so basically, some confusion happens, and I accidentally end up with quads <laughs> in a tiny pot. Yeah. 
thousand thirteen hundred deep. <laughs> yeah, thirteen hundred deep. <laughs> good God. Okay, so uh, the good player, the pro checks, the uh, two hundred big blind checks. This guy bets out. I, obviously, I don't fold, so I'm trying to trap. Yeah. Here, um, the 200 big blind calls, and I'm happy to see him call. Absolutely. Um, we get a excellent car for this card, right? Yep. And. I think the play here, I, I think I misplay this. Because I say, yes. I want to build a pot here at this point, right? Hopefully that hits someone. And people mm -hmm. fold out. Yeah, so they you, just both fold. So you pot led here. Yeah. Because I want to get, like, stacks in on the river. Yeah. I mean, I appreciate why you're doing it. I don't know if it's necessarily bad. So. I might be so, wrong, but. What I do is I go on tilt, and that's the setup for this next hand. Okay, next hand. So, so obviously you're not supposed to go on tilt, right? But uh, I do, so. Uh, Solver doesn't tilt. Because I'm tired. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. How many hours have you been so playing for at this point? Hand. This is the next hand that you can laugh at me at, okay? So <laughs> I'm, I finally have position on the guy I want position on, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm on tilt. So I wow, look at all there. these limps. This is that's, insane. That's, so that's mental. Pot, right? There there's actually should be two more limpers here, but let's just say. I'm raising there. the A6 or the 8 6 on the button yeah, versus yeah. these limpers. Versus seven players? Yes. Yeah, a bunch of weak limpers I'm squeezing with any two, more yeah. or less. Not seven well, deuce off, but you yeah, know. But, yeah, but I'm on tilt. So uh, the checks around, the good player check, the bunch of bolos check. One of them bets 20. For some reason, I call. I think it's fine. And I get a flush draw and a straight draw. So I just pot it. This guy calls. I get an ace. Bingo, I think Vegas and the Mirage. So I bet 225 into him. And he calls me. I kind of like that. jamming the turn, to be honest. I don't hate your turn bet, but I would have jammed. That's insane. <laughs> <laughs> so then I, I, I decide I've had enough because I'm in there for hours and I just pack it up and say bye. Yes. Yeah. That looks like a profitable session, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, very profitable session. One buy okay. in to uh, like 13 buy ins. And play a couple hands kind of goofy and realize it's time to walk. Dude, most, yeah. I mean, that's yeah. better to do that than losing everything. And it's like, oh, yeah, I guess I need to walk now. <laughs> well, so. I decided to pack it up. How many yeah. hours had you been playing for that, that last Not hand that we just saw? Point, oh, I've only been playing five hours, but I okay. think I'd have enough by that point. But I'm 67 okay. years old. So oh, wow. Okay. I can't do long sessions. Okay. So, I hear you. Uh, plus driving, right? So I hear you. I hear you. But like, if I was younger, I'd still be, the, be there. But I think I'm too old to do like Jonathan Little 16 hour sessions, right? No, I hear you. No, that turn, I jam. They were sending what, 26, 30, 32 big blinds or something. I like the bet, but I rip it. And yeah, apparently that's insane. <laughs> so, can we? I I think that I mean it's a viable bluff. I mean, you potted yeah. you potted turn and you potted river, right? Yeah, yeah he put them all in on river. Well, he had less than SPR. Enough. He had like SPR point six or oh, something yeah. on river. So yeah, I, you know, I think it's a totally viable bluff. I mean, he's just like, well, there's two aces. That means he has less kind of thing. Well, I, I correctly, I figured out that he didn't have an ace, right? So, yeah, he's never, yeah. he's never folding an ace, and I, the ace is a good card for me, right? Yeah, it seems mm -hmm. like a viable buff to me. But, I like it. Okay, well, that was so I lose a hand and decide, ah, I've had enough of this. I'm going home. 
Yeah. Well, you made money. So I think it's a successful, successful session. Yep. So you should, you, know, right. you should come to Niagara, man. I will I eventually. Time. Sooner or later, I will make it. I promise. I have a I bunch of other, other hands that make me, make me look dumb if you guys want to watch them. Um, or does someone yeah, else sure. want to why, well, why don't we mix it up? Why don't I show a hand and we'll come back to you? Okay. Sure. But, so how but, do I stop sharing? Uh, just hit the oh, stop, stop share. share duh, duh. Okay, yeah. There we so, go. So uh, why don't I share a hand and then King, do you have a hand? I can get a hand. Okay. Now why don't we go around Robin a couple times? Sure. So we're sick of looking at each other's uh, blunders. Um, <laughs> should I search spew filter again, or should I show you a winning hand for the first time ever? No, don't tell um, us. Whether, I think the best choice learning. is to show us a hand where you have a very interesting spot, which is an edge case, right? Yeah, Any yeah, hand yeah. that is like a close decision or an edge case. Or All like the ones demonstrates... immediately top of mind are from tournaments. So I will uh, do some database digging here and find you a uh, deep stack one. That means or another good. option. Like I have a hand where I that I wanted to share with you guys where I uh, I donk turn. So Jonathan Jaffe had in poker coaching. Jonathan Jaffe had a. Uh, class a webinar a live webinar on friday about leading turn and so i implemented that so that's one i was hoping to share so hands like okay. that any kind of hands that i, I think that actually will... i have a i have a perfect one that's kind of in line with a lot of the lines you guys have been advocating for earlier today that i have been advocating against so i have a good one barreled up here okay let me just find the hand on other hand on. i'll just show one and then we'll go to someone else um okay this hand so this, okay, so this is kind of is interesting because it goes to what we were just looking at with trainer. So can you see my screen, guys? Yes, sir. Okay. So we have a, uh, I guess, a hijack limper. We have a really stupid size for an ice <laughs> I mean, I don't know what this guy's doing, but uh, we have another. So what are you guys doing here with your King 7 in the big blind? Yeah, call. I don't really see a major need the three, but you can bet or call. Yeah, I think I called here. Yeah. Your call. He's good. Yeah. Bad, but... So we get a pretty good flop. Mm -hmm. So this is our. So let's keep in mind pre-flop action, which I think is important in this hand. Limper, a two big blind isoer, flat and I flat. Mm-hmm. He puts in a half bet into three people, right? Yep. So what are I you guys call. doing here? Call, call, call. Okay. Easy call. Three callers. So he's got, he got, I'm sorry, two callers. I don't think anybody's leading here. It's an <clears> indifferent <throat> turn or non equity changing turn. Mm -hmm. he, he polarizes, right? What are you guys doing here? Call. Yeah, this is just a call, right? We're never check raising. No. So I think I'm curious what you guys think. This guy's uh implying a lot of strength, right? He's repping a lot of strength. He's repping not ace king a lot. He's repping not necessarily. King. He's not sizing geometrically to get you all in on river. That's not a polarized sizing to me. That's just like a normal continuation sizing to me. Okay, I see your point. I think this is a big bet for multi-way on turn. Yeah, it Maybe is. It is. It is. But it's not like extremely polar in my okay. mind. So yeah, I'm open to this because I might be misreading the sizing tell here. Uh, I, I guess my argument is that uh, it's a second bet into multiple people for a B75 in the multi-way pot. So I see your point. I um, this might no, be and I and I see your point too. I uh, don't don't get me wrong. I know where you're coming from. I th I think more polar would be looking to uh, get in more get in more chips though. I think a polar sizing is going to be an overbet in the spot 32, 35 big blinds. Yeah. Uh, so let's. So what would two e? So I'm trying to learn two e. What would two e be here? So I'm the effective stack. So let's just use me as the effective stack. So on turn. I didn't calculate it. It was just kind of off the top of my head where it came up. This is like, let's say it's a five to one, right? SPR. Yeah. So five to one SPR is 
Yeah, and you're right. 2E is an overbet of 120%, 110%. Okay. So 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 this is not 2E. 26, 28. So this is not 2E. So you have a very good point. Um, I still think, I mean, I think he's got value here. Um, Yeah, sure. And I'm I'm blocking blocking gloves. But we're never folding. Trying the second not stop pair. Yeah. We brick, nine repeats. Uh, Well, I don't think... is anybody leading on on? No. Yeah. no well, okay. You here. know what? There. Well, ten mm, percent pot. Mm, you know mm, what? This might be a good place for a blocker sizing. I'm no. just. I'm considering it. I GTO, GTO is never blocker bet. Not with this kicker. Or GTO well, does not I don't know. have blocking bet on the river. It does actually. Yes, it does. Really? Yeah. I've never seen. I never. I was looking at one yesterday. Well, then I'm reading things wrong then. I, I mean, so Solver of... will use a blocker bet in some. It's rare. After uh, um, after bet bet, I think it's. Uh, I think you're too strong. Donk, for a it blocker does bet here. have some blocker bets, but it actually, ironically, is a little bit like a C R mat bet, where it will blocker here, mm-hmm. and then it will fold to any shove. So it's See, a very that's... rare occurrence there, but it does have some blockers okay. in the situation. I use I use the bet small on the river all the time against recreational players because I assume they don't have the balls to check raise bluff me. Does that yeah. make sense? But is well, that in position but, shove you? Yeah, uh, it does make I sense. I think I would do it way more than a um solver bot would because well, I just exploited I use I use a 10% blocker sizing a lot like a lot more than any solver or GTO lines advocate and most of the time the reasoning for that is to get to a cheap showdown with a marginal holding which this kind of kind of meets that criteria it's I think you might be a, with it, this it, you might be just a little too strong for a blocker bet here I think it's fine for a check call but Generally, that's like the reason for the blocker bet is to get to show it on with a marginal marginal hand that you don't want to fold. Okay, so he bets in. What is this? Oh, like okay, a B seventy five. King king. B sixty, I think. Nine nine queen. You're probably chopping here. I think you chop. Um, shouldn't call looking for the chop. And this makes the argument for the blocker bet. Oh, this bot yeah. sucks. Yeah. Uh, I think I think you call. I'm I'm normally a fan of folding rivers, but I think this one's a call. So this is B seventy five. So what are we? Um... Oh, it sucks. We that sizing is a nightmare. So look, okay, let's let's walk through this couple or uh, a couple Shit. minutes. So is this a bluff catcher? Are we beating value? Not really. Okay, so like, what's the value you're beating, King Jack? Like, which are no, 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 no. I think you fold. Yeah, I think we're only. This is a. This is a, we've got a buff catcher. The yep. only, the only value we're beating is an overplayed King Jack and King Ten. Which makes me like the blocker line even more. You bet ten percent pot, and if he comes over the top, you just fold. Otherwise, and you get Peter, to showdown. And we're also blocking bluffs, right? We're blocking. Yeah, true. No, I don't know two blocking spades. bluffs. Well, we are. Oh, you are. Holding two spades is absolutely blocking bluffs, for sure. Um, And he doesn't seem to be particularly scared about the repeat nine, which is a little weird. He might have actually driven down the side. Um, so, yeah. So I just folded. No, I like it. But, Good fold. Uh, Good fold. I like the idea of a blocker here, potentially, on river. I don't know. It's no, rare. after after all that was said, I really like a ten percent blocker on River. And if he jams, you just fold. And if not, then whatever. You got to show down with your top pair. Yeah. So yeah, it's a it's a it's an interesting spot. Um, the yep. only question is if I played it passively. I mean, I think sometimes we use the block in here because we kind of want to take control of our own destiny. And it feels like we're doing it. But um, I like how you played it. Yeah, I think that this is ultimately just. I would have taken right. every decision the same, and then I convinced myself that a blocker was the play on the river. But apart from that, it's I would have played it the same. So why don't we? So thanks for taking a look, guys. Thanks, King. Um, why don't we go around the circle a couple times? Anybody else who wants to show a hand, King, Skate, you got any hands for us today? Or uh, unfortunately, we don't have Matthew here today. He's always got fantastic hands. Yeah, I think Mike is driving, so he's kind of 
I've got one prepped unless Skate is all ready to go. You know what? Um, actually, I have no hands. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Oh, he's hoping for a bathroom break. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> okay. Uh, Should we take a bathroom me. break? Let's take a bathroom break. We've only got five people here. We can take a break. You guys want to take a break? Okay. Two minutes. Yeah, let's take, let's take a break, and we'll get back together in like five minutes. Cool. All right, take a break, guys. All right, I'm here. Let me chat. Hey, King. Hey, I'm here. Cool. Start scoping this hand out. No, this one really reminds me of the, uh, we had that ace queen hand where we turned the, uh, nut flush draw earlier. It's kind of a similar similar ish line that this reminds me of here okay cool so i thought it was a good one hey what's up with that drug dealer simulator thing <laughs> hey. I, I, i've been playing that lately that's hilarious i was playing that this morning oh my god that's so funny <laughs> it's a great game it's, it's actually really good. I've got like 90 hours into it or something. <laughs> yeah, feel free to scope my desktop. Good stuff on there. <laughs> yep. 
that's so funny. I play Civilization. I play Civilization Six a lot. Oh, oh yeah, I like Civ. I played Civ Three and Civ Four extensively in my younger years. Yeah. I played Six of One a lot. Civilization. Yeah, the first one. What Civ One? Oh my God, that's old school. But I'm like sixty-seven years old. So. Did you play Caesar? Caesar Three? No. Okay, because that was right from around that same era. Skate, do you play any video games? Uh, the only game I play, sir, is poker. Uh, actually, um, actually, uh, I also play Call of Duty, but I stopped playing because my laptop started overheating. Okay. No, oh, good All for right. you. I'm uh, I'm occupying more time than I should be with stupid League of Legends, and I hate it more than anything. I put so many hours into it in my life. It's the worst. God, I hate it. <laughs> it's the worst I, game ever. I quit it. I quit League oh, yeah. of Legends. I used to play. It sucks. I hate it. <laughs> All right, so you've got King okay, we doing in the small block. We going doing the hand here. Let's do it. Okay. Uh yes. So we get two five. Is this two five? Uh, no, this is going to be online NL twenty five. So we get the cutoff raise. I decide to three bet. I think that's pretty standard, right? Might be a yeah. mix, but I'm three betting most of the time. We get the call. Kind of miss. Low paired board, rainbow, backdoor diamonds. Because I three bet, I chose to C bet. And because it's not really favorable for my range, I chose to size up a bit, like for the purpose of What's the thing besides this? Polarizing. You change, you change your bet size if you miss and are the position. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Polarizing. Because if this comes ace, king, 10, I'm much more likely to have connected with that board. I can get away with betting smaller. This is saying like either I missed it or like I'm way, way, way ahead here. So yeah, think, he... because I think you have more fold equity by betting nine as opposed to betting like seven or like six. Is that the th thought? Uh, yeah, so you're expecting you're expecting a lot of calls, but when you polarize on turn, you're gonna be it's it's just it's like a uh, it's like a line that works out very favor favorable for your bluffs. Um, when it's like when these boards do not have a lot of range interaction, it's just very much polarizing. You're saying uh, like either I'm bluffing or I'm absolute top of range here, and when you're absolute top of range, I'm piling in the money. So it's a it's a polarized line because it's three bet. I chose to see that. All right. I, mm, I the, mean, I, so here's three bet to fold right king jack and cut off. But I mean, he's going to be calling with all his pretty much all his pairs on a paired board, right? So I, I think with that being said, maybe going like eight or seven, like um, he mentioned. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I would rather go just a little bit smaller because you know it, when you do get called by those pairs you'll be losing uh, some, you know, a little bit less chips. A little bit less? Okay, okay. Because there's not much difference in my mind. If I bet seven versus nine and a half, psychologically, it's the same thing to me. Um, but yeah. you're kind of looking at, like, as, yeah, yeah. as as a function of what you're actually holding as it's interacting with this board, it's just, it's losing you less it, in the long run. It feels, yeah, it, it definitely does feel like the same thing, pretty much like it's like, you know, what's the difference? But it's just like, you know, just, um, the, you know, the numbers, the math. Uh, yeah, you're, okay. You're less in the long, you know, you lose that many chips less in the long term by doing that over and over again. Okay, that's fair. So probably how I chose the sizing is if it's a board that's very favorable for me, I kind of click my third button and then size accordingly from there. If it's yeah. kind of less favorable, I kind of click the half or the two thirds button and size accordingly from there. And it's a little yeah. less than half here. Yeah, you could probably size up in more favorable boards, but I mean, I, I can't. I mean, I, I, I don't mind it, but I'm, I'm probably thinking Solver would want to go a little bit uh smaller because I, I don't know if they would choose a size with all of their over pairs i think okay, solver there's... is going to check at a high frequency but it's going to have big bets we can look at this in solver it's okay i was just going to ask there's no argument for a check here though is there but you're saying you're there expecting is, a check there is an argument for a check in the three bet pot yes heads up in the three bet pot okay okay i would like to look at that um but either way c bet large get a call Nine of diamonds, I get the, uh, turn the second nut flush draw, and I lead out here, large. Thoughts? Turn equity? 
yeah, makes sense. Yeah, I I've, mean, I've changed my bet sizing on the turn to either bet pot or double pot or call or check. It's kind of double a weird pot. line. Now here. we're talking some Charlie Carell sizing. What? I don't get now, the uh, So Charlie Carell is this uh, British guy that plays Maximally a exploitative. exploitative game, and yeah. King is a big fan of his. And you know what? I think you are right here, because what's the difference between betting 30 and betting 80? If he's calling 30 on this board, he's probably calling 80. And then I get, I get paid more. So you know what I mean? I don't I don't really like the sizing here because it I chose the sizing and it gets a call and this is why I mentioned that ace queen ace queen hand from earlier where I'm left with SPR 0 0.5 on the river with a missed flush draw and now I feel an obligation to continue my bluff. You know what I mean? Like Yeah. That's I would have preferred just jamming it on river here. If I fold out worse, okay, so be it. If I get called by something that's ahead at the time, I still have substantial equity and I'll still realize enough of the time for it to be a profitable play. Well, give us the reveal, man. You shove. Oh! -ho! Of course. Six. It would have worked. So, it would have worked. Yeah, I just shovel and turn, huh? Well, yeah, and then you don't let him realize full equity. And it's like, yeah, okay, sure. I've got two I, overs. I got a diamond draw, but yeah, you're kind of cashing out on your equity. But then you I, don't let him get there with this nonsense. It just sucks you're out of position, but yeah, I, I kind of like the shove on the turn there, right? I mean, I don't know. Does this remind you of that ace queen hand from earlier? Because this is the first thing that I thought of holding the ace of queen with the or ace of spades with the uh, queen of hearts. I was no, arguing to jam no, it on over bet jam. Very much reminded me of that hand. Yeah, nobody has a seven here. Do you guys want to look at this one as solver? I I would like to. I'm kind of curious about this turn, okay. and I'm kind of curious about this flop sizing too. Okay, let's let's do that. So I'll set it up here. Might not be the most exciting hand ever, but I think there's a lot well, of merit it, to it. I think the value of it is that it's a place every one of us is in every day, especially if you play online. So. Well, absolutely. And after like, okay, bluffing turn and then, okay, you miss. And this is like very much opponents looking at this, just like you, just like you are looking at, looking at all of these missed draws and you're sitting here with SPR 0 0.5. Like he's got such a fantastic price to call with any made hand, even like ace King's call here. So. Okay. So I'm going to start sharing yeah. my screen. Char uh, King. Uh, uh, so I'm going to steal oh, it oh. from you. Okay. My but, mistake. One no worries. No worries. Group. I can steal it. Cause I'm the host today. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. I don't know why so, I can't close it. There we go. Can you guys see my screen? Yep. Uh, yeah. So this the first question is, do we have checks? And the answer is yes, we do on this board. Sixty-two percent. Um, and Look and this that. is going to be driven wow. just by. Wow. I mean, we just miss, right? So yeah. So if our range misses, we're going to have checks. And if we do bet, it it so we're checking a lot. And if we do bet, in theory. Our bets are I, highly polarizing, right? I just I find that surprising in a heads up pot. I would expect three way that check would be that frequency, but no, heads but up. Does that what that doesn't that flop doesn't hit our range at all? No, but you're except, still uncapped for, because of the three for bets. Maybe you, pocket sevens, pocket fives. Well, I pocket mean, tens range. plus. <laughs> what? Like you're you're uncapped here. Like anything pocket tens plus. Like you still three bet pre, you still got aces, kings, queens, jacks, tens. So the other reason it's king is it, so you kind of you can look at the kind of nerdy uh, linear equity chart and see it. So we've got this massive, well, not massive. We have a subtle range advantage across a large part of the range. Wait, we have the range advantage here. Uh, well, let me finish. We've got a subtle range advantage along oh, yeah. across a large part of the range. But then when we get up to the nut advantage, which is here. Okay, 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 okay. You know how it okay. flips? It yep. flips right here? Yep, absolutely. So yep. this is what's driving our check frequency, right? Yep, so, yep. And, and that's in so, line with what Jonathan Little teaches too. Yeah. yeah. No, absolutely. Okay. So we can look at this a couple other ways. We can look at like buckets advanced. And we could All see, right. yeah. So small blind, you've got, you've got, uh, uh, well, this is interesting because it's not showing same thing as the linear equity draft. Let's try it this way. So you've got best hands, right? So best hands. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
but he's he does have this nut advantage here in this part but then it flips yes. again i guess up here which is why this is a little bit convoluted but I'm just yeah essentially my... this kind of sorry go ahead king no sorry i was just pulling up my uh my jonathan little flow chart here my my sizing chart here this range advantage nut advantage nut advantage flow chart yeah yeah, 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 yeah. No, so that does advocate for smaller too. Yeah, so so that is driving what we see here, which is this highly polar, polarized strategy, right? Yeah. Okay. okay. Now, a lot of people say, "Fuck it, let's just bet small because people overfold," and maybe that you know maybe that's a viable uh, strategy. But looking at baseline, this kind of flop is going to drive a high check. High bet frequency. Well, yeah, and I chose to bet this flop, and I went close to half pot there, and that's largely because of the reasons we're talking about here. I was keeping all of this in mind. So as I played um, the hand. So you bet like a B fifty, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So B fifty is totally in there. But what are you supposed to do with your combo? Your combo is queen jack suited, right? Uh, king jack diamonds. King jack of diamonds. So it's... you can do. So you're. Yeah, 50 to 75. I did about 50. Yeah, so your strategy is fine. Um, but we are but I wasn't going changing. small. I wasn't going small because of the polarized board, because of the lack of uh, range interaction. Okay. Like, okay. I'm kind of I'm kind of just trained to look at a board like this, analyze my range and say, yeah, this isn't that this is either check, check or bet large. And because it's a three bet pot, I'm gonna be betting. And if I'm betting, I'm betting large. And let's look at let's think about I mean, let's think about what he's supposed to do with his sixes, right? So sure. just as an example. So when you be 50 here. Six is probably called flop and they're probably supposed to fold turn. That's what and I think. We're not getting we're not getting any folds from any under pairs at that no, size. Not on this flop, and you shouldn't either. But I would but suspect he what folds. What if we turn. use the bigger size? Do we begin to generate folds down there? So then we do begin to generate folds down here. Fours and under. Okay. Obviously okay. these aren't well, this is a set. He had sixes. He's never going anywhere. But yeah, so we, is, we do generate some folds in this in this region, and we generate more folds in this region. Sorry, deuces through fours we're calling versus the fifty percent sizing. Oh wow. Okay. Wow. That's yeah. pretty substantial. I think so. Okay. We yeah. No. We saw. Yep. Yeah. We call. Yep. So we'd be fifty. He's always calling with his combo. Now the other question is, we got a very interesting turn because um, nine of diamonds. It brings in your FD, right? Yeah. And so now I think you do could you I think we continue if we be fifty purely with our flush draw. And we can kind of filter for this. And what sizing did I go here? Flush draw nuts. I went like two thirds pot. I bet large. So to me what's interesting here, guys, is that um we do check the, so the, we're filtering just to look at our flush draws. So we do check with our ace highs because they have a semblance of showdown. So we get some checks, but your combo is going to bet pure. So you played this well. Okay. Because your combo is going to bet pure and it's going to bet for a mostly another B50. Yeah. So, so I you, went a little larger here, but. Okay. So we'll say the well, 50 is the preferable. It? Well, no, you can look at the uh, preferable line here. I think it's it's a B fifty, which is the fifty. Yep. Okay, so if we B fifty here, what does he do with his sixes? So I don't think he's going to fold them because that yeah. would have left me a very or a much more reasonable SPR on river. I I am not a fan of sitting with SPR zero point five on river, whether I'm sitting on a bluff or a value combo. It's just such a wonky size to play, and especially against weak players. Like if you're looking for fold equity, betting half pot. Yeah, I agree. Doesn't but happen a lot. That's so an issue. So more fifty and like pretty much no all ins on turn. Uh, I just got back, but I was listening. Yep. And the flop, no half pot, smaller bets. Um. So what's the question, Skate? Sorry. Uh, on the flop, was it like more small bets? And I didn't even like, look no. at the thirds. I didn't the, the, even know. So the 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 big point about this hand is that, in theory, it's high check, low freak, bet big. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Oh. So we mostly check. And our preferable size would be seventy five if we choose to bet. No, no, yeah, I, okay. I, I was, I was saying the flop. That, so we're looking at the flop, flop sir. Oh, okay. Well, okay, sorry. I, 
You're right, because you're you're on the flop, but I just keep looking at turn and then I okay. Okay. So we'd be fifty here. So this I thought this is interesting. He's supposed to shove his sixes because he folds out all the your overcards. He uh, doesn't jam without the gut shot though. I'm he sure wants, he doesn't. Yeah, exactly. He wants the gut shot. He's let's go through his range, which is it's I assume these sixes fall at the very bottom of his range. I would think so. Um but they don't because they have the gut shot. Where do they fall in this? So do you guys know how this works? Like highest equity hands he has up here. These are going to be like his sets, right? Seven. It was quads. Uh, like what if you make the turn 10 of diamonds? Turn 10 of diamonds. Does he fold those sixes? Um. Okay. Yeah, we can oh, no, wait. that. No, that actually. Sorry, that's still a gut shot. My mistake. It would we have to give be a, of diamonds. We can make it like two of hearts or something. But let's let's. uh. Let's look and see where the yeah. See the sixes fold this very weird. We see the equity number down here, in this corner. Yeah. But um, they fold kind of this in this weird kind of fight or flight is the term sometimes it's used, where it's like, okay, well, we've got a gut shot. Uh, we turn additional equity. He is continuing his aggression. Like, let's just shove for protection. Shove because we have a gut shot. Fold out all his bluffs. Yeah, that's what that's where this part is. And so oh, I like the theory behind the shove. I really do like that. Yeah, and obviously, very few people are going to find this in game. But you know, if we see it enough times here in in the solver in our study sessions, maybe we'll begin I'll to find implement it because I because I like this a... play. I like this play. Yeah, yeah. These are I, I, I think that's a lot there. easier to find in a uh, in a PKO tournament versus a cash table. Yeah, yeah, that may, I guess that makes sense because they have more nuts than we do, and uh, I was probably wrong about possibly shoving turn on uh, with a paired board. Maybe if it wasn't paired, you could maybe find it. Uh, maybe. So we also had a question about you had a question about what the sixes do if this is a two of diamonds. I think uh, I was saying ten of diamonds, but I think jack of diamonds is more relevant to my, to my question, so that the uh, gut shot's not out there, or that the straight's not out there. Do you want to put a two of diamonds to make it? No. To well, take I away think an yeah, two. Yeah, okay, sure. Yeah, yeah. Because two yeah. and jack would effectively be the same for the reason well, that I want to look at that. Okay, so <laughs> now what are you doing? The question, the first question is, what do you do with your jacks? And that, and the answer is, for some reason now we check them. We don't continue our aggression. You have turn, or you have out of position donking here. What do you think? Well, uh, oh, I do. That was a mistake. Well, yeah. you were out of position. You were a small one, right? Oh, hang on, hang on. Hang on. Yeah, no, no, no. I am out of position. My mistake, my mistake. Okay, yeah, so, so you do. I, I was yeah. wrong. I had it on the wrong uh, node, though. You're right. Uh, yeah. So you do continue addressing on this two of diamonds with your turned. Yeah, I bet like three quarters pot. I took like the 7.7% line. Uh, yeah, like a B75? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's what I did in game. Okay, so what does he do with his sixes now? His sixes are a lot; they're indifferent AF. Yeah, yeah, they have folds now, whereas they didn't before, though. It might have something to do with blocking your seven six bluffs. Yeah, so you might yeah. have three vet bluffs with seven six. That's a little bit of what might be going on here, but okay. um. Okay, so let's put it back to what it was in game just to finish this off. So you, it was a nine of diamonds, right? Correct. Correct. Yes. Nine of diamonds. Uh, you'd be 75. Yeah. Uh, I think it's yep. this or that bigger size, by the way. Yeah, and then the folds disappear. Well, not only that, he doesn't shove pure. It beat, it, when it was B50, he was shoving pure here. But well, when he had the folds, it, it was like pretty much same frequency fold call jam, and now on, it's same frequency fold jam for this combo or call jam for a villain. Yeah, yeah. For this combo for villain, yeah, he was like thirty three, thirty three, thirty three, more or less. I think, I think for villain, I, I swear that's what we just saw. He was shoving the sixes. So if you B fifty, he shoves. Well, we were just looking at the two of diamonds turn. That's what I was talking about. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah, we're getting pretty. We're going into the solver rabbit hole, guys. All right. So we'll just run through this one and go to the next hand. So yep. B75. 
he calls, which you suppose he can do that. Yeah, the point of looking at the deuce versus the nine was what happens when that diamond's in there without the uh without his straight draw being yeah, in there. Yeah, yeah. And then six of clubs. He hits uh, the gin card. Uh, uh, yes, correct. Uh, yeah. Well, we know he's never folding. The first question is, do you shove on this card? And uh, now we give up. So but what are wow. we? Wow. Okay. 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 So this is important. So let's make this. And I see this a lot. Like I run into these, you run into these rivers where you're sitting with SPR 0 0.5 after bluffing turn and you're sitting on a give up where it's just like, if you just jam turn, you're going to realize your equity 33, 35% of the time. You're going to fold him out. Most It's mostly going to be a profitable play jamming the turn in these spots, I think. So I think in theory, it doesn't, it wants to obviously unblock his FDs. Mm -hmm. So blocking his FDs is a bad thing. Um, but you know, you, you play the way you play it. And if your, uh, if your population is going to fold appropriate or fold over fold to the jam, then you do it. But let's mm -hmm. see. Um, yeah, this is like, I, I brought up this hand because this is like a hand where I took more of a solver approved line. But even in this one, I'm kind of looking at the turn and just kind of just rip it on turn. And I think it's going to be more profitable in the right. long run. Do what you think is the best profitable play for your your two uh, overs, the diamond. Yeah, I I think it so is. So river here's a six. Question becomes: Well, we we're not supposed to get here with a lot of hands this way. Obviously, let's normalize this. Normalize. Okay. Um. So, oh, I was I was like, where do our bluffs come from then? So our bluffs are going to come from someplace. Our low equity mm -hmm. bluffs are going to come from. It likes to use these these busted SDs, right? So th this this Jack-10 turned a gut shot and is going to shove, unblocking. It's going to pull All it of its queen-10s. Queen yeah, okay. Unblocking, okay. but... And then they, these are going to queen-10. All these... But it just doesn't like to use. Yeah. It wants to give up with the with the diamonds in this yeah. particular run out. Um, now, the question is, if we do find the shove, notwithstanding combo we have, yeah, we do find the shove. Does he fold the sixes and then we'll move on to the line? Well, he's not going to fold the sixes now. Yeah, he but... he rivered his boat, so he is not. He's really only folding stuff that missed up here. He's really only folding his busted FDs. Put an ace Jacks of clubs calling. river. What about the ace of clubs river? Obviously, very favorable for his range. Obviously hasn't connected with this board. Does that have enough equity to call the jam, even though it's only thirty percent pot? For it's all clubs in. all in. Let's what see. calls? Sixes. Well, that's crazy. But the sixes are now indifferent with their interesting. Okay. Wow. Well, the sixes are not. Yeah, sixes. The quads. Eight. Six it prefers folding. Does prefer folding. set. Uh, we can look at it kind of in a linear fashion here. So the threshold really to call. So all. Uh, so it's doing some here. So jacks are calling. Jacks are callings. Tens are tens are where it gets indifferent right here. Okay. Okay. That kind of makes sense. I would expect that. So tens are indifferent. That makes sense to me. Uh, pair of fives is indifferent. Sixes yeah. are indifferent. So so kind of yeah. tells me that um, maybe better to bluff that ace than that six. Yeah. 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 No, you're right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. All right. So. Interesting. Um, why don't we go around, Robin? Derek, do you have a hand? Yeah, I got a bunch of hands, but... Um... So why don't you show a hand, and then I'll show it. Okay. Um, I'm going to use Poker Stars Replayer, if that's okay. Yeah, sure. Um, so I go share screen. Um, like, I'm, I'm looking at the Zoom meeting thing. Yeah. Oh, share screen, the big green thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then click share. Oh, okay. can you thinking about screen? it. Okay. Uh, not yet. It not it yet. does now. Okay, cool. Replay her. Okay. Can I ask a quick quick question about this uh hand charter that I'm using? Sure. 
before we go on. This is the yeah. chart that I downloaded from the Jonathan Little site. Mm -hmm. Look at all the limping there is on a small blind when there's a race. Yeah, I yeah. use so I I use a mixed strategy in the small blind, but that's largely as a function of a tournament player. I know you guys largely do raise or fold from small blind, but I'm much more comfortable playing a mixed no. strategy. So I think if that's kind of what like you've been this, trained this to play, I think it's fine. Deep. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I so, live a lot in the small blind. Those, so those are some. Those are pretty old charts. Those are the old implementable charts. I um, raise more than this, but I have a lot of limps in the small blind. My argument to you is that it's a complicated strategy, right? So if you were to go to the the page where it's blind versus blind, and then it goes, okay, well, if you limp and then they raise these these combos, you. We raise these combos. You fold these combos. You see, you I find it to gets... be a much less complicated strategy because when you're raising pure in the small blind with bottom of range and you're facing three bets, those are much more uncomfortable spots rather than limping and having to just call another two big blinds with some junky suited combo. Yeah, you'll... it's just a very hard uh, strategy to implement because it's a lot of effort for not a lot of return, right? So the way I look at it is, I was like. When I was when I really started working with Solvers, I was like, "Wow, look at all this donking it does! Oh, this is amazing! It does this donking where it's got this nut and mm -hmm. range advantage. This is so cool." And then I was like, "Well," and then I asked uh, two people about it. I've told the story seven times. I apologize. I haven't I've heard asked, this. I asked Phil Gelfon in a "Ask Me Anything," and I asked <laughs> Jeremiah Williams, who uh, is a high stakes cash streamer. And yep. they're both like, yeah, sure, the solver does have a docking strategy. However, the amount of effort you have to put in to learn how to implement that docking strategy beyond flop profitably is not worth the return in EV. You should spend your okay. studying time looking at other parts of the game tree which are more profitable. Uh, yeah. so and you see, I've spent years playing the small blind mixed strategy. So it's actually like the opposite for me going to a raise only strategy from the small blind. So that holds true, but it's like the opposite for me where I was. Yeah. So for a tournament player, I could see that. So the point I'm making, Derek, is implementing the small blind strategy with a heavy lamp. You got to put a lot of effort in it to make it profitable in the long one. Whereas. If you just play a raise first in strategy, uh, it's a simpler strategy to implement, and you could spend your studying time working on more profitable parts of the game tree. Okay, that's yeah. Uh, I used to play a raise razor fold from the small blind. My coach is the one that got me away from that. My coach is the one that got me into doing the limps. So it's basically a, like what you've been training. Is that a cash trained. coach or a, a tournament? no tournament? Reputable, high profile tournament. Yeah, well, coach. well, let's not confuse tournaments and cash, right? Tournaments are a totally different animal because in tournaments you have no rake and no an and you have antis. In cash, yeah, correct. Everything's different, right? So, but also if if that's kind of like how you've been trained to play, it's probably going to be more profitable for you to just carry over that strategy rather than try to implement the opposite strategy. Would it? Well, not? King, that very well may be true, but I mean, it's important when you're playing cast to think about how rake and no antis affects the game. Okay. Okay. Sure. Okay. Well, thanks. Because, uh, like, I've been following this chart religiously. <laughs> and uh, maybe I should look at, into going for another chart. Because this is like 68% limping, limping from the small blind. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a pretty. I mean, aces and kings and uh, ace king off just. I think most it. of us on this call used to use these charts. I mean, I used to use them. Scotty's talked about it. I know Mike has used them before, but I've never used a chart where I'm open limping with ace king or pocket kings. That's nonsense in my mind. But so these, I think these, I think this part of the chart is kind of outdated. Sure. Okay. So sure. What charts should I download and start to use? I like BBZ. I mean, if you have a BBZ preflop subscription, that one is the best in my what? mind. I don't You're cutting out. What BBZ? Yeah, BB uh Bravo Bravo Zulu. BBZ.com. BBZ Poker. You... Bravo, Bravo Z. Yeah. So I'm gonna steal the um screen from you for a second, Derek, and then I'll hand it back to you, okay? Yeah. I want to show you something. 
Yeah, BBZ charts are like the best in my mind. Maybe others would disagree, but yeah, uh, BBC is awesome. He's he's Jordan is is amazing. Yeah, I agree. So, so these are the GTA Wizard charts. They're free, right? Uh -huh. So, if you want to have them on your computer, you can just and then, I think Scotty did this. You could just screenshot them, just go through them. Raise okay. This is my raising range. I'm going to screenshot this. You just screenshot it, and then you just save them as uh, as um, screenshots. But also, you probably know, Der like you shouldn't just be robotically memorizing the like range. There's there's a lot of flexibility with these in the game. It's a mistake to just like memorize these cutoffs and just always, always, always play them like that. Like it should be variable based on your um, table. But also, if you're obviously if you're a poker coaching member, we should say uh, there are charts available to you there's a there's a a tool that you can use if if you are a poker coaching member which was will also yep. give you charts like I'm so, a poker member now okay so uh, i would say gta wizard is a good choice yeah okay it's kind of the default right like i say it's more important to learn why these charts are finding these three bets from these suited connectors rather than just robotically following them. Understand why it's finding a three bet in the spot. Understand why it's finding a fold versus a four bet in the spot, rather than just, oh, ace queen's a three bet here. Ace queen's a fold versus a four bet here. You know what I mean? Un try to really understand why it's finding those plays from that portion of the range. And then you can deviate from the ranges much more and it will be much more profitable. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So I think Mike, Mike has a good point in chat. He says, you know, most of the time we spend in GTA Wizard, so... Yeah, absolutely. No, that is. Uh, I mean, Chichu Chichu Wizard Derek is the default now. Okay. Yes, it is. Uh, Poker so, Coaching does have really, really good charts, um, uh -huh. and it has a very good tool. And you, you, if you go to Tools Charts, mm -hmm. uh, you can still, as a free member, you can still get access to a lot of it. So. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to just screenshot the GTO Wizard charts. I think that's a great place to start. And start with that. Don't, um, don't use them in-game. These... What? Just don't use them in-game. That's against terms of service for like every poker site. Can't play with charts as you're playing. Just What? You can't oh, yeah. play with charts up? No. That's really? very against terms of service, yes. No, Ooh, you want to study, study those in your off time. You don't ever want to be playing in a game with charts open. That is, That will get you banned. Really? I didn't know that. Thanks for the yep. heads up. For so sure. I should just print them out and stick them on beside my monitors. Yeah, use it for study time. It's good for uh, going through like hand reviews. Review a session, you know, look at what you're opening, look at what you're folding, compare them with the charts, be like, oh, I should have found an open here, or oh, I should have found a three bet here. It should be a, a function of study. Like it shouldn't just be open as you're playing. That's very much against terms of service. But Oh, just having yeah. a chart open is against the terms of service. Wow. Yes, sir. You know, in times gone by, I wrote a program that would um, download every table. The nice. Of the table, like, and I told uh, Stars, I'm doing this. Is this illegal? They said, we'll let you know. Oh, uh, so yeah. I have that... like terabytes of uh, very old hands from 2013 to 15. Data that you accumulate in game yourself is generally fine, but any sort of software that uh, uses like a database for with data that you haven't accumulated yourself is generally going to be a against terms of service. Customer mm. service is generally very good about telling you where the line yeah. is now. I yeah, always email. I told them what I was doing. What year was that? 2013 that to 2015. Yeah, okay, a little while ago. That makes sense. That makes sense. This is like when they first came out, right? So. But yeah, just be careful. You don't want to be using charts as you play, especially online. Like casinos, it's probably not against terms of service. You probably technically can sit with range charts open in a casino, but always check if you care about getting banned or getting your bankroll I, I confiscated. Always check. Banned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just be mindful of that. Okay, I'm going back to uh, grabbing the the screen. Yeah, I just wanted to show you those charts. Okay, yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. No worries. Um, so I want to go to the Zoom and 
share screen. I'm sure I see that. So I go zoom and then share screen, right? Yeah, or you could just share the application, right? It's up to you. Uh, you can sh you have all those windows. You can choose the window uh, that oh, okay, has the application yeah. so that you want to share. Share screen. Uh, screen two. Uh, let me just move this stuff out of the way here. So, so you should be able to see this uh, Poker Stars replayer. Not yet. Not on my side. It'll be at the bottom. The share screen right in the middle. Green button. I think I'm sharing screen. I don't see it. Oh, okay. Let me try that again. I'm on the Zoom meeting. Share screen. I click share screen. I click the screen. Yeah, nothing's changing for me. Share screen. It's not, uh, it doesn't show you the hold em replayer? No, I do not see your desktop. Okay, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try sharing one of my... Um, 1K screens, okay? Okay. Maybe that's it'll give me more bandwidth if I do that. So I click on share. Oh, I got a glimpse of something there. Works. See something. Yep, perfect. Perfect. Okay, so this is oh. Poker Stars Replayer. Mm -hmm. And I think the way is I just dump hands into it. Yeah, I mean, you can dump the text into the the window. Yeah, so I dump my text into the window, upload hands. Boom. This is just like, uh, this is just, I'm just playing one, one sentence. Just for... Well, and we don't discriminate on, on here. stakes here. Any stake is welcome on this call. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm a... Uh... I have a King 10 suited, so I'm raising. Okay. Is there any way you can make uh, the window a little? You might be able to just like, yeah, that's that's perfect if that works. Yeah. Oh, that's so, great. That's what I was hoping for. Yeah. Great. So I'm raising three and a half because I think the most often uh, error that people make is they call too much. Okay. So I get nothing. So I bet, of course. I've been bet betting on like a quarter pot all the time if I bet. Against Big Blondie, yeah, I think that's fine. I get call. I get check raised. Uh, well, you get click back. Tiny check raise. All right. Yeah. Tiny check raise. So I think he, I'm putting him up. I think he has like two pair set, that kind of stuff. I get nothing. I fold. Good. Good. Yeah. That makes sense. So. That's I think check thing. raises are going to be a lot of two spade combos as well, which got there on the turn. Yeah. Kind of I'm a fighting. dumb. Yeah. So, uh, kind of I dumb size on his anything, part. Any world yeah. where I stay around. I dump another hand in. Upload hand. This is another hand. This replay is better than upswings. I should start using this one. I have a queen. So, of course, I raise. So, so all right. So, you ISO'd. Cool. So, you got yep. queen and you got two limpers in front of you. I like a raise. I'm raising well, limpers. I'm, I'm happy to take the pot, but, of course, people call too much. I, I flop gin. So, I have pretty much the nuts. So I bet, like I had been going um, 100% pot or double pot or nothing, but mm -hmm. I decided to make an exception. I think the sizing is perfect. I don't think you want to go any other sizing here. And so they call. Third is perfect. And then they check and I check back. Yeah, I think so... you can check. Check call. Yeah, they check. Or you I can continue back. turn. And they have a 10. That's, I think, damn, I missed I missed a lot of value there. 
No, I don't think you're missing value. I think you want to be pot controlling with a combo like this. I think it's fine. I would have I would have continued turn a lot of the time and then check river, but check with the intention of check call or uh calling river is fine. Yeah. Checking turn with the intention of calling river is fine, I mean. Yeah. So I I, I hate my check on the turn. Yeah. So. I don't hate it. You're calling versus a river bet though, right? Oh yeah. Show. Yeah, yeah they it's bet, fine. I call, like, yeah, uh, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just wondering what. Sorry, right, we lost you there for a second. This is another hand. Ontario Please reception, bro. We all deal with it. That sucks. I have garbage, so of course I bet. <laughs> That's a pure raise from the button, right? King eight off in a cash game. It, uh, it's cuspy. Okay, okay. Like it's probably below the cusp, and I probably should just dump it because these guys call too much, right? King yeah. seven, I raise. King six, I'm looking at folding. So, no, um, I think that you can open it against people. I mean, you're in position, so if they're the question is, are they going to throw you off your? equity and if they're not going to throw you off their equity if they're not three betting enough you can widen your opening range and mike points out that this is in range yeah this is like the bottom of our off offset kings he's right okay yeah. i sure. agree so they check so of course i'm betting like a quarter to a third yep they call like gin so of course I bet pot. Yeah, that's what I do here. They call. Well, <laughs> I like. So this. Why are you betting? Let me ask you a question because maybe I don't understand. Why are you betting pot on turn? Because I because I'm making a change in my game where I bet pot or double pot or don't bet. So. Okay, so you're you're essentially you the change you made in your game is that you've gone to use a more polarizing strategy on turn where you're yep. either checking or potting or double yep. potting. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Makes sense yep. to me. Like that's based just on DTO, you know? Okay. So I don't know if it's good or bad, but it makes things simple, right? I think it's good sometimes. I think it depends a lot on um, board texture. I think a paired board where big blind does possess at some frequency fours oh. that call the RFI and then call the bet on flop. I think probably we don't have a polarizing sign size here. I just think because of board texture. Maybe I should think re rethink it and think in a polarized situation I should uh, bet pot or double pot or nothing. I, I think, don't think of that as much of a polarized line. Like, if you overbet jam turn, that's polarized. This is just kind of a normal continue in my mind. It's well, kind of geometric. I mean, I mean, that's just uh, semantics, right? It's like, how do we define polarized? I mean, okay. So, but I think it's a pretty significant distinction. Like, well, I think a pot size bet in this in SRP here is, is polarizing means essentially you are. I mean, whatever. It doesn't matter. It, it's just, it's, I I think that this is a very large bet for a, a board that pairs where Big Blind has more 4X. Yep. Sure. It helps his range a lot more than it helps my range. Yeah. So, so I think I check a lot on time. I do have something to say of, in regard to uh, checking turn here. Like, if you check turn, this river peels any semi-competent player is going to be jamming jamming river or placing a large a large bet and then you're the one that's kind of faced to make the difficult decision so you can... true i mean so i mean if the solver doesn't mind difficult decisions but we do as humans i we, hate difficult we, decisions <laughs> yeah we don't want to face them but that doesn't necessarily so I... mean it's not the most profitable play so then when you continue like pot-ish on turn, even his 4X is going to be checking here. If you get a call on the turn, you can just check the showdown. And if he has a four, so be it. And you don't have to face a nightmarish call. Or he's going to check raise you on turn, which was really another nightmare. Yeah. 
but then I mean, you can it, I mean, probably some just players fold. are going to check shove this four, depending on you know the player. But good players should. Um. So okay. So we'll let you go through the hand. Maybe we'll put this in solver. So he. So you pot a turn, right? You get this jack. He checks to you, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So. I would no, check back here. Yeah, I like a check at this point. So he checks, and I check back. Yeah. Good. I like it. Yeah. I think this is, I think he played this hand well. I mean, I wouldn't, I would, what I would do here, so if people over, so if people are going to over bluff, I don't know they do. I don't know what MDA population is doing. But when this four comes, right? This four is going to be good for his range. Mm-hmm. Agreed. We'll, uh, we'll see you, Skate. Thanks for coming. For sure. Um, see you next week. So, she so, got... so, oh, God. <laughs> that was loud. Don't do that again, Skate. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, uh, and so when this... this... I'm sorry. I, I don't even know the, the power of my own mic. It's actually a, a pretty good mic. It's a singing mic, so... <laughs> we, you, that's all right. You have a very well. I think we just don't. We underestimated the power of your of your singing voice. This was beautiful. Yeah, that's you think. <laughs> I, I meant to do it with more with more of a you know, like the the, the sixes kind of style. But I didn't. No know, worries, she, man. She go we'll, like. Go. So we'll we'll see you in the chat in uh, sixes streams. All right, for sure. All right, cheers. Later, guys. Bye. Cheers. See ya. Um. Yeah, so this four, I think I like check. I like I like checking turn. I think it induces over bluffing, um, which okay. can be an uncomfortable spot. But I think so. You got to think about origin ranges here too, right? So you're playing against big blind. So big blind has got a very wide origin range, right? And he certainly called your bet on flaw. But if you check turn, I think he gets to. I think he gets to river with a lot of air. Does sometimes get with dwarves. Yeah, but then that makes I sense. think you then get to um Yeah, you have a comfortable call with King Eight. Yeah, that you spot. then get no, to right. catch and you right. might be inducing some nonsense bluffs. That's a that's a pretty comfortable bluff catch. I'm 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 on board with that. That's not a wonky borderline cuspy bluff catch. That's an easy one. I just think that so when you polarize the sizing. I mean, he's got he's got a hand that actually probably at some frequency should fold, but when you use uh, a pot sizing on turn, I'll try not to call it polarizing here. <laughs> when you use a pot size, <laughs> when you use a pot size on turn, I mean, you are filtering his range. Um, right, the stronger hands. You're filtering his range, but I mean, he's got a hand. You know, he wants to call it. That's fine. His prob- his seven is probably very indifferent on turn. Um. But yeah, so I mean, you got you got a lot of value though, so it worked out. I just think that the four is good for his range, so in theory, that's not going to drive us to bet big. Sure, but, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. I think you played it well. I would have played it exactly the same in game. Mike, thanks for coming, man. We will talk to you next week, and also shout out to Mike, who's departing because. If you were here yesterday, those hands that we used, he got we got from Mike. He was nice enough to send me some hands for us to use. So yeah, thank cool. you, Mike. We'll talk to you next week. Um. All right. So can I share hand? Yep. Go ahead. All right. So it's down to the three musketeers here, guys. So we uh. I thought this hand was interesting because that's that was not what that was not what I was looking That looked interesting, whatever that was. I saw a straight. Um this one. <laughs> okay, I think yeah. So I went to a class with uh Jaffe. Jonathan Jaffe. Do you guys know who Jonathan Jaffe is? Oh yep. yeah. Yeah, Jonathan Jaffe's I mean his classes are like Half the reason I still subscribe to Parker Cartoon. They've 
they don't have as much as they used to with live webinars, but Jonathan Jaffe almost makes it worth it. So once sure. a month, he gives a really good, I mean, he's just an incredibly informed, incredibly intelligent uh, poker player. Um, and so his session was on turn donking. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the fundamentals of turn donking is that we turn donk at a low frequency or at some frequency, I should say. Sometimes it's a lot okay. when we have a turn that shifts equity to us. Yep. yep so here sure. I am playing. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, King. No, I said, yep, that for sure. I agree. So here we are playing uh, full ring. You are missing. We got open. I think this is a pretty, oh, this is multi way too. It's a pretty standard. I think I'm calling here pure. Well, we saw in charts earlier. This is pure call. I like a squeeze. I mostly squeeze here. Okay. That's cool. 15, um, 14, 15. I mix though. It's calling at some frequency. Depends on the to call uh, this time? RFI. Are we getting an interesting flop? Got an over. We've got two back doors. You called yeah. pre, right? Called pre flop. Flattered pre. He makes a very inappropriate. He should be checking pure here, number one. And he makes a very in inappropriate sizing here. I think that's uh, appropriate for a C bet sizing for a polar board like this. No, that's a polar uh, sizing. Not for... multi way. Okay. Okay. So, multi way in a range that is very good for me. Oh, by the way, let's ignore the button, right? The button is this is a this is a bug. I'm in the big bind. Okay. Fine. Small bind button. This, the other color has been cut off. Okay. So, so yeah, yeah this is there are no big butts here, multi way, because this board who's got the sets here? No, that That's makes it an even easier fold. Then we've got the sets here, and we've got the sets here. Um, and his sizing is way too big, yeah. and it missed. I mean, this, I mean, he's got over pairs, he does, but he's also got a ton of. shit. So I'm sorry, I, I I look at this. I'm looking at the seven point I'm it's slam dunk fold all day long. You're advocating not folding with these this ace deuce? Uh well I didn't fold. I don't think that Solver's gonna fold a pair plus draws here. Okay. We well, have a pair. We have we have two draws and we have another card. It's not gonna fall. Okay, sure. Um should we well, call <laughs> Go ahead. I'm just I'm just looking at that sizing. You know what I mean? Like heads up. Okay, I can get on board with the called heads up. Um, call well, it seven. It's a it's a very large sizing on flop. I I think it is composed of over pairs, and I think it's composed of uh air. And I think it's there's annoying enough... holding an ace here. You want him to have the ace king, the ace queen, the ace jack suited, the ace. 10 That's suited, a very good point. That's um, why I'm less inclined to call. This might be a good one to run and solve our, um, even though we can't do it heads up. Um, so here is a leading opportunity that Jaffe talked about, right? Okay. Because our 7-5 suited just got there. Yeah. A bunch of other stuff got, you know, the straight completed that he doesn't have. We have the nut advantage now. Oh, yeah. This is horrible for his range, this board. He, he has the nut advantage. We have the nut advantage now. It's heavily shifted to us. Absolutely. And because in addition, his sizing on flop was um, was polarizing, right? It was filtering. Yep. So one of the hands that we're going to be left with when he makes that size is the 7-5 suited. Yeah, true, true. So true. trying to implement what I learned from Jaffe, I put in a small, uh, a smallish bet, like a what is this, like a B forty, yeah. And he calls, and that's a fantastic card for us, mm -hmm. obviously, because we get, because we now we have the Ace four, we have, um, what are the other straights here? Six four. Mm -hmm. We have all nine seven. This stuff that's got here, yeah. So. I pot, I pot. Even your nine seven diamonds made a straight. 
and we get and we get yeah nine seven diamonds and we get the uh we get the fault so i just thought that, yeah this is like implementing what jaffe taught me which is you got leads take them yeah no i like that a lot i really like it once you found yourself on that turn because i mean i was arguing to fold flop and i wouldn't have even seen that turn that's so. very good because i don't think like that <laughs> until you told me about it like i wouldn't yeah, no, have picked up like on that. that well part that the range is good for us and we have, we're the only like, one that has straight thinking more about how our range that turn card especially is good so good for our range mm -hmm. that we just gotta bet it yeah yeah this is yeah. this is really a range play this is really a range versus range not advantage play and just maybe I maybe I put too much value into uh, the idea of card removal and blocker effects. I'm just I have a much harder time finding it with an ace in my hand. I just I really really do not want to be holding an ace to make that lead. I, I just, think I need to think like this more rather than just playing my hands. You know? Yeah, range That's, versus range is really important. Yeah, yeah it's everything. But it not, I mean, but also it could be a mistake, right? Because this guy very well could have a uh, pair of kings here. Or you have bear jacks, and he can be like, I, I have an over pair. Uh, yeah. all right, it's all, it's just... important not to like over fetishize blocker, blocker, uh, blocker theory, too. It is what important. What stakes but... is this, by the way? Uh, it's, 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 uh, it's, uh, 500,000 over a million. <laughs> <laughs> what? You guys don't play the stakes? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, uh, so, so yeah, I think that, um, I'm curious if we do this in solver. I don't, I mean, we may not, and you may, may totally be right that, um, no, I like it. The more fold. you talk, the, no, the more you talk, the more I'm sold on your line. Let's just look at this as solver real quick. Is that all right? Absolutely. Heads up. I don't think it's a fold. I was looking at it three way before, uh, dipshit yeah. folded from whatever position that was. Shit. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, I see your point. I mean, he did fold, though. So it's not multi-way on flop. If he yeah, no, called, if he called here. I was kind of assuming he was going to call when I. If he called, I would have folded. But yeah, because it's now heads up. I think it's a different story. Yep, I agree. I think he played it perfectly. Um, that being said. Start. Two, five. Eight, right? Eight five two, eight five two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we do. So the first thing to think about is what's how when we see this many donks. What does that tell us? It tells us that we have the nut advantage and the range advantage, right? So yeah. donks translate to oh, nut. Oh, sorry. It's, that's us donk. Okay. I thought it was him. My mistake. Yeah. 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 So this is our big blind known, right? Yeah. When we see this many donks <laughs> in solver, we know that we've got nut, nut and range oh, advantage, absolutely. which we can, which we can see here. So we don't have that much of a nut advantage, but we've got, a, so I guess the way to look at it is look, look at our good hands <laughs> difference. Mm-hmm. We've got such a mess of good hands. And then if you can look up at linear equity. You chart, would never know the equity is that close from a board like this, though. It would You would think it would be much more favorable for the uh, out-of-position player. Yeah. But that yeah, equity is running a lot closer than you would ever expect it. Oh. <laughs> well, you'll see this super commonly in these kind of donking situations because okay. we don't have the overpairs, right? Okay. So that does drive a lot of equity to the... Okay, sure. That is modify. actually very, very, very key. But here. where okay. you begin to see this donking pattern happen is where we have nuts that they don't have, right? So yep. we've got sets. And okay. we've got o OESDs that he doesn't have. Yep. So that's what's driving this. Okay. Understood. So this also, I think, is going to maybe allow us to lead here. I don't think Soft is going to have this. Maybe it will. We'll see. So we check. I think it will. And also, uh, King, we may not have a call to the size. Or he actually may have the size because he's going to have a polarized strategy here, right? Okay. Where he's going to have a lot of checks on this board, but he is going to get the B75. So you're sure. right that the B75 is fine. I wouldn't have used it in that situation. This is a lot different than what we saw in game because he was out of position against cutoff. Yep. So, but 
when he's in position and gets big bond, he's going to have big bets. Okay. Okay. Sure. So he bets big. Now the question is, the first question is, am I a station? I am not a station. So we're calling here. So can I just go off on a tangent a bit here? Sure. Um, when do you choose like a big bet size as opposed to like betting 25% or 30%? Well, let's, let's dive into that. Cause it's kind of fun. So let's go to, yeah, that's usually driven by polar, polar boards, boards where it's like either your top of range or you're nothing. So let's go to study. That's study. kind of how I use it anyway. Boards that are favorable for me, I can bet smaller. Uh, let's go to pull boards. Raise. Call. Check. All right. So. High equity bluffs. We've shown you. We've You've been here when we used aggregate reports before, right? Derek? Oh, yeah. I, oh, oh, yeah. But like I don't. I'm not intimately familiar with it, but I... Okay, so the question you're asking is, in what situations do we get big bets? So the right. first way to look at that is, when do we big bet most? So so th these are these are our glow on all flops in the universe. So these are our bet frequencies. So 5% of the time we get these big bets, right? About 8% of the time we get these big bets over here. Okay. These two, right? Um, right here. We get a B75 and a B125 about, what is that? Like 7.5% of the time. Mm -hmm. Um, So if we then look at how that is, so we can sort here by that bet size. When do we get that bet size here? And we can see that we do get that bet size on well, the first one is paired boards. There's another thing I wanted to show you. Hold on. Let me see if I can find how I showed that particular. Oh, I think it's my check frequency. There's something else I wanted to show you. Yeah, it's kind of this one, I think. So, okay. So, this, <laughs> no, let's, let's flip this. It's weird how it sorts it sometimes. So, yeah. So, this is uh, this is just sorting by how often we check on all boards, right? So these are the boards that we bet the most, right? All these high parent boards where we have the nut advantage because we have all the aces and you know, all this. Yeah, your ace king jack rainbow are like are, are, we bet a lot on these triple boards because we have an overpay advantage. So we all have all the flopped houses, and then we go to the other end where we're checking a lot, and these are the boards we were just talking about. Sometimes ace ace low low is a high one to check. Also, these boards where there's flop straight, which is kind of the board that we're looking at now. Now, the question is, on what boards do we big bet the most? And the question is, it's I think it's somewhat correlated to how often we bet. So when we bet rarely on these boards, when we do bet, we get a lot of big bets, right? Yep, so yep. there's this correlation between Bet frequency and bet size. Yeah. The less we bet on a board, generally, the more we get a large bet on flop. Whereas yeah, generally the oh, sorry. That's all right. Let me just finish up real quick. Whereas if we bet often, like these boards, we're betting small and frequently as the people is the term people use. On a board like this, we're gonna bet small and frequently. We're also gonna get big bets, but we're also gonna bet small and frequently. Yeah, generally, as you go lower, like, if you look at a flop, the lower that the high card gets, the less C-bets you're going to have, but the larger sizing it's going to be. That's another good way to look at it. Yeah, that's a good way to explain it. Yeah, like on a six-high flop or a seven-high flop, you're going to be C-betting much less frequently, but when you do C-bet, it's going to be a much larger sizing versus like an ace, 10, 7, something like that. So that's a lot to take in. Um, yeah. yep. it's a lot to swallow. It's a lot to take in, but really it's, it's driven. There is a core. So to start with the easiest correlation is that the less we're betting on boards where we bet less, 
and our frequency of bending is low, we're going to have a higher proportion of big bets because we're going to use a polarizing strategy from the beginning on a board that we're going to check a lot because that board most likely is pretty good for our opponent's range. Yeah. So we're going to cool. say, okay, well, we're going to polarize. We either got the nuts or nothing. Yeah. So, uh, and then, so these are the boards we'd be 75 the most, right? Notice we're never pure B75. But, you know, boards like where we triple and we have the overpair advantage. Ace King is a good board where you see it a lot. Triple overpair advantage. Those trip boards, I mean, they're so heavily understudied. Most people don't know how to play against those. You see a flop sure. 555, 777, 888. You just see bet 25% and they fold. Well, the big thing to think is that if you're the uncapped range, you've got an advantage. Absolutely. Because you got aces and kings. Absolutely. Um, so that kind of that's that's a primer. That's a that's a that's the beginning of the conversation. Yeah, and the more you look at, and the more you kind of drill, the more you notice patterns, and the more you can extrapolate those patterns into your actual gameplay. Yeah. Um. So okay. So let's go back to this hand. I think we just blew Derek's mind. Yeah, yeah. I'm just sitting here contemplating. So if we look at this eight five two board, yeah, it didn't hit the preflop raisers range, mm -hmm. but the collar has all kinds of junk, which it kind of hit. Yeah. So if you someone who with with a um who bet you know, has ace, ace, but that didn't hit the board at all. Whereas someone who called could have their pocket twos, pocket fives. Yeah, and somebody who eight, opened that seven, ace, six. ace, keep in mind, they're going to have ace, king, they're going to have ace, queen, ace, 10, much more often they're going to have that ace uh, than that ace, ace. So yeah, it is much more favorable, much more favorable for you. So yeah, they do not have a lot of interaction with that. They do have the over pairs, but they have many more combos of unpaired ace, x, unpaired suited king, x. Etc. Yeah. So unfair. Absolutely, that's true. So they they just have like the ace five, ace eight, ace two suited in their range, but so do you, I guess. Yeah, it connects with the combos that you could be holding much more. Under the gun opening, it's a tight range. They don't have a lot of ace x. They don't have a lot of five x. They so, don't have ace deuce. They don't have ace five or eight five eight deuce. So since it doesn't hit their range, you're not betting frequently on this. Is that correct? You're well, betting. You're not... you're checking sixty percent of the time, but when you do bet, you're betting big. Betting big. Yeah. And that's why you see them betting less too, because it's hit them. So it's so, so much if harder. If it misses your range, you either bet big or check. Generally, Is that correct to say. Generally, yes. Yeah, polarize. That's going to be you're generally. Saying... A polarized spot, yes. Yeah, because yeah, because now I don't know the mechanics behind it totally, but you're saying you're you're generally generating trying to generate folds, or you are checking. So I would so check this board a lot. Ace, yep. So when you get ace five two, you basically say to the to the opponent, "I have a pair of aces. I want to shit down this hand right away. Just give me the pot." Sorry, a little bit. Yeah, is I that think that's kind what, of it what is. you're saying. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Just and that's where these pre-flop charts really come into play too, because you can really visualize like what an under the gun open looks like versus say what a big blind defend looks like, and then you can kind of visualize how much of that range is actually connecting this low board versus say this tight early position or opening. It's really, really hard for, say, a 12% VPIP player from early position to have hit an eight high flop versus somebody just flatting from the big blind. So that translates to them betting less and you being able to lead more and whatnot. So you have a leading, if, you, if you're the preflop caller in the big blind, you have a leading range because this is so good for you. Yes. Saying, yeah. Oh, yes, it's 8-5-2, my perfect flop. Yeah. You're jumping yes, around this... doing a dance. Is that what you're I mean, the, the, well, let's look at so the most obvious board, right? Big blind. Just it's much easier for a big blind to have connected with that board than it is for under the gun to have connected with that board. Just, these are the uh, these are the in theory 
Now, I don't implement a big blind donkey range. I'm listening to Phil Galpon. But in theory, these are the best boards where you have flopped a straight and he ain't got no straight. You got I, all the ice cream, he ain't got no ice cream. Because I never no. donk. Well, I don't think you should start. You're probably uh, not wrong for never donking. It's like you I don't have to look for range. excuses to find it. It's a part of the strategy that Solver has. I think it's not a good strategy to implement. And I'm just saying that because Jeremiah Williams and Phil Galthon told me that it's not worth the effort to learn. You know, you, you won't go too wrong by taking check raise lines or check call lines versus donking lines and spots. I think a check of... raise is a much more effective line here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um so so we check. Oh, by the way, Jack, are there any other questions you got? No, that, that was a great explanation. Thanks very much. I'm, I learned so much when I come to these things. It's great. Well, it's good to have you. I'm glad you come to these, man. Yeah. So check. He bets big, which he's allowed to do. We're not. Uh, let's see where our folding. Uh, yeah, I hope I don't. Quick. I hope I don't confuse stuff by getting into the minutia too much. I try to keep it relevant, but. Well, that's yeah. Minutia is good sometimes. All right, so we're not. Yeah, we're not folding a pair. I mean, so let's just go through where we're folding. Let's see where our, our filter is, just real quick. So we do become, so these are indifferent, right? Which is surprising because they've got back doors, but these are just, they don't have enough. So our, if we look at where our threshold for calling this big size is, we're folding a lot, right? We're folding half our range. Yeah. And that's just, that's largely a function of his sizing, right? Like if he bets 1.8, third pot there, our calling yeah. range expands drastically significantly, Correct, right? right? So like we're okay. folding okay. half here. A lot of people are just going to be 33, like, oh, the B33 here. Yep. Goes from 47. We're only 40, yeah, 30 okay. percent Okay. That makes sense. So he, he chooses this big size ink, right? And then we, you know, we're not we're not going to fault we have. We have a pair plus too much going on. Um, And we even have check races here, but we're going to ignore that for now. So we're really interested in what happens on this. I would argue this is an equity shifting card, which I just have to find the hand. Yeah. I would argue this is an equity shifting card, which allows us to to lead. I'm not sure Solver is going to give it. But it might. So we call. The six comes. That's right in our wheelhouse. Is it there is a right distinction between uh, an equity shifting card or say just like a turn that Maybe it doesn't shift equity, but it doesn't really hit big blind, or it doesn't really hit the under the gun. Like it's kind of just a favorable board for us. So I have not looked at this solve. I promise I didn't cheat here, guys. And you, we donk our entire range on this board on this turn. Oh, okay. So this is so I found the donk. Yeah. So well, so this turn done. comes. We've got a pure donk because we've got now. What's going to now? The question becomes: Why are we doing this? And this is important for me to understand why. So, yeah, that's kind of what I was just asking. Is this wow, a function of? Is yeah. is the six of hearts a function of changing equity, or is this just a function of uh, the, under the gun doesn't connect and he like connects even less once this turn peels? Do you know what I so mean? It Does really, it really so this kind of play, this kind of donking frequency is going to be John. It's going to be driven by a massive equity shift right okay, okay so let's okay. look right here so he bets big right so he bets big so he's got a real significant nut advantage now because he bet big mm -hmm. and we call him. Mm -hmm. now this six comes right now watch what happens to the equities and the linear equity graph boom okay that you're not going to see a more dramatic shift than that yeah that's true wow so that's we went from shift. A forty-seven percent range dog. No, that's very really eye-opening. Dominating. Yeah. Okay. And now I just that, go ahead. Sorry. No, no. I just I just wasn't sure if it actually impacted equity that uh, that much, or if it was just like if the equity was kind of running, you know, within a couple percent, but it's just like oh, it's still very difficult for under the gun to have connected here. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, it's just massive. I mean, you still got over pairs, but we are the only one with straights, right? So if we yeah. go to um, hands, right? Now, that's a huge shift for a non-spade or a non-diamond card. That's we've got sets straight. So let's do a filter here real quick. This is also an interesting way to look at this. 
We bet. Straights and sets. So now we're um, just looking at straights and sets. We just have we've got the straights and sets. We've got we've got five yeah. combos of straights and sets, and he's only got one. If we take yeah. out the set, he has no sets. And we have we have we have the straights. So this um this clear shift of the nut sauce is gonna drive this dunking strat. I guess I'm just trying to figure out where that shift is coming from. I think it's just like one less card for him to peel because like the texture isn't really that that much different. You know, it's still like a straighty low board. Well, it brought in a straight. I mean, the straights are now possible. Oh, okay. Yeah, no. And it wasn't. Okay. It, it brought in completed equity, right? Three, four. Yeah. Okay. No, you're right. Okay, I see it. Yeah, I see it. Because we've got, we've got the nine, seven and we got the four, three. I see it. I see it. And he does not possess those cards in his range. He has no nine sevens. He has no nine seven. He's opening from UTG. He shouldn't. So, um, well, yeah, he should. Good point. <laughs> so, um, so we, so we get to dunk. So I found this. I'm happy. I have not looked at this before. I'm happy I found this, um, and I'm happy. I think I've used. I've used a bigger size. This twenty percent sizing to me is solver sizing. Yep. I, so I, I just feel like it's too small in game. I don't know if that's I agree. True or not. I agree. I agree. He's calling so I, everything. So I, I hit a I did a B thirty and I said the B twenty, which is Solver likes. But we are that what is this? Flop. No, I like that. I think that was very clever. So strategy. We can't give it a B fifty because it doesn't have it. It's got a B twenty. He can't raise us too. Well, he can raise us. I was wrong. He raises a shit ton. He's okay. like, he's going to raise here with all his straight blockers, right? So these nines are like, I got the nine. You're lying. Okay. So they're raising, right? Aces it's are finding like, it from like the king, queen, the king, jack suited as well. Ace and the kings are like, oh, well, I guess we're going to play for stacks now. Yeah. Um, And so it, we're going to have a very interesting. Yeah, he's falling a lot. A surprising amount, but the rest of his range is like, okay, fine. We're gonna pull all these raises in position from across. We even have hands that were some hands were in position is shoving or folding like king queen. It's like all right, whatever. Yeah, I was looking. At I just don't queen. believe you. I have no yeah. equity. I'm yeah. gonna put in position raise in. Yeah. yeah. Um, and. It, the Which other seems kind of thing... suicidal on a board like this versus a big blind range. Like it's just that seems yeah, suicidal. it's pretty hardcore. This is a pretty hardcore. This is a very interesting strategy, and also it's never slow playing top of range. So it does have eights, right? It does have the set of eights, mm -hmm. and it's not so. It's never slow playing them. It just wants to start building the pot. Okay. It doesn't. It never has straights, but it's like you does may have change. Straight, but like, I have the I have sets, and so here you go. Sorry, go ahead. No, I was just gonna ask if that changes with the eight of diamonds, but I realized the eight of diamonds was on the flop, so it's redundant. Okay. Um. Okay. So now the other question is: All right. So we found this successful donk. I don't think people are gonna raise this much here. Humans are gonna raise in position. I think they're gonna be spooked a bit. He calls. Uh, we get a good turn, and I'm curious if we are supposed to continue the ruse with our ace high here. So three of hearts. I think on a river like this, you should. I think it's mandatory. I don't know. So we're supposed to give up with our our, our pairs. Mm. Where do our plus come from? So yeah. So now Where big blind. So our over pairs are like good in. Our busted straight draws like our busted. Yeah, busted. Because these are gut shot is very like, eye-opening lines for me, where it's like you're bluffing on turn, but you like these give ups on river, where it seems like it just makes sense to continue. But I, but we've been seeing a lot today that there's a lot. This of This is a really complicated strat, right? This is why we, this is why eliminating donks from your flop strategy makes sense to me. Okay. This is a turn donk, and look how complicated it gets. Yeah, it's absolutely. A two -street and look how complicated it gets. Yeah. So it's yeah. taking. It's taking all of this trash, which was FDs, and it, so all, it has FD dunks here. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, okay, I'm going to fluff those. What's I think FD? my hand is a pair. Flush draw. 
It's my oh. hand's a pair. It wants to just check it, right? My hand's like down here someplace and it just wants to just check it. Yeah. Yeah. And then these are like in between. That's why it's blocker sizing, which is the orange color. Yeah. 10%. Uh, same here. And then. Which makes sense, even though it's an over pair, it makes sense to blocker there. Yeah. And then it's got all this other stuff in here. So this is a really super complicated strategy. And. Um, but I think this is important to look at. Oh, it's yeah. Good. So I'm happy just. I mean, I think that I'm going to follow through here most, the majority of the time on a good card. I am. And, I'm and, continuing for sure. And I think this three of hearts is a good card. Does it bring in the, any draws that he called? Um, and, you know, I think, you know, I think at some portion, some players are going to fold out over pairs. Yeah. So, 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 and so, so we're saying that we check our ace deuce. Well, it gave oh. up on river. Like it was bluffing on turn, but it was giving up on river after it got called on turn. Yeah. It, but, gave, it gives up the ace deuce because it's got a pair. Checks 99.4%. Which actually uh, against the solver is going to be fine because he's going to be showing up with a ton of this ace king. Or sorry, a ton of the uh, unpaired ace x over cards. We're as well happy as to some. See ace king. We have ace deuce. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think this wins enough in solver land where that's why we're seeing this uh, check. Yeah, so, it's got enough. It, he's got enough give ups. Yeah, for buff yeah. checkbacks. This makes perfect sense in Solverland. So, yeah, I like my flag. Um, but I mean, if we look at hand class filters, in reality, though, I'm I'm continuing on River. We have a lot of trash hands. Kings. These are all the FDs. I think we saw. Yeah, these are all the FDs that are that are just Broadways. Okay, that it's it's just gonna show up with, and then trash hands. And it, you know, good hands. You can see it's going to use a lot of blocker sizing, okay. which are good kicker top pair. Yeah, ten eights jackets. And then ours those. falls into the weak. Well, let's get rid of trash hands. These are the weak hands. It's and it's like okay, well, these are shitty pairs, and that's just enough for showdown. So yeah. Um. Okay. So, anything else you guys want to see in here? I think we covered it. Yeah. Um, do you guys want to go? Let's do one more hand if you guys want to, and then we'll call it a J. Or... Yeah, man. Sure. Sounds who, good. who wants to have last hand? Last hand call. Last hand. I have a hand, but... Uh, yeah, I don't have one prepped ready. It's not as impressive as that one. Uh... Well, you're ahead of me because I don't have one up. All right, Jake, yeah. you get last hand. Okay. Um... So I go to share screen, I choose a screen, and click share. Actually, I did just find one, but okay, fair enough. I go through my hand replayer. Uh, I'll bring it onto the screen. Oh, you play Crusader Kings? Oh yeah, nice. I love that game. Yep, it's uh one of those games that you don't want to play too much of. Yep, hundreds of hours. <laughs> yep. It could it could basically become your life. Exactly. Pasting it into here. And... Hello. Okay. We're here. Yeah. Full screen. Can you see it? Yes, yeah. sir. Okay, so this is a continuation of the same session with the same people. Okay. I have a screen, standard bet, flop the nuts. So, of course, I bet. I've been betting like 25% all the time. Okay. He check raises you. He check raises me. You call, oh. sir. Can we just go back to? Yeah, sure. Sorry, I, I kind of missed. That was a little fast. Sure. Um. Okay. You check raises. Okay, and you call. I'm with you. So we bet. He calls. He he check raises me. Mm -hmm. I say fine. Call's good. Yeah. yeah. I like Call's a call. Right I'm not looking to pile it in yet. I like. He B fifties. Yeah, I like turn right. 
Yeah, yeah, we get the flush draw on the turn. So you B50's turn, B50's, um, so B50, so you've got, a B50 means that you've got, so your pot odds are like 25%. Yeah, can we do go you back out, Do you win one out of four times here? Oh, well, definitely. If we get, if we get our flush, then we get a stack. Yeah. So I'm happy with that. And if we get our queen, we're happy with that. I'm just considering if I'm raising on turn here. I don't think I, you raise against I, this I kind of progression. I think I prefer a call. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I like a call. So I don't like, I didn't shove it in on the turn because I think I thought, eh, I'll shove it in if I, if I hit my river. Uh, my river. Mm -hmm. I yeah, I think, I think a call is appropriate. I don't. I think if you were to shove this, you would be overvaluing your top pair against his uh, um, nutted line. That being said, yeah. king queen hearts, I probably jam. But his sizing is his pot is sizing. I think you're beating some worse uh, kickers. So is Jack here? I think. I mean, yeah. so you're allowed to. You're going to lose here a lot. I think you're going to lose here more than you're going to win, but you only have to win 25% of the time. Yeah, that's what I thought. I thought I'm, I'm probably doomed here, but yeah, I mean, I think you're going to lose here yeah. a lot, but I think the pot odds um, are a, a call. I don't think you do lose here most of the I think right you, you win way more than 25% for sure. Yeah. Oh, wait, you folded? So I folded that, though. So I don't okay. Know oh. kind of weak. All right. I think yeah. it's a call. I think it's a I call. I think that. I think the pot odds are. They're not exactly twenty five percent. He's like betting like B sixty, but I think. I think you just call. I think you're, for the for that price. So I mean, we can look at MDF too, right? So MDF here, to a B fifty, it's like fifty seven percent. You're definitely oh, in the top half of your yeah, range. Yeah. It meets MDF for sure. Yeah. So I think you just call. I think. I think your hand. I think you lose a lot, but I think you just call because you're too far up in your ring. What are you losing to? 10 8? 10 8. Yeah, it doesn't feel like a set, but it could Based, be just. You, like... you win the vast majority of the time here, I think. Like the vast majority, like 75%. I mean, yeah. Random two pair, you're going to lose to. I mean, you're going to lose. I think this feels like two pair. Very well could be. Yeah, so I thought you had two pair. Like maybe a yeah, but I think you call. I think you just. So I, I think you're too far up in your range, and I think the pot odds being offered are too attractive. And I think calling turn is fine. I definitely don't think you need to pile it in on turn there. So, oh, but I would have called river with, with with the turn call. Okay, but I just okay. didn't know about the river. I would have called. I would have called river. Okay. Well, I mean, I... yeah, you're going to be losing to a random two pair a lot of the time, but it's it's going to be profitable for you in the long run. Yeah, because I don't think they check raise me with ace nine or ace jack, do they? It's probably exactly ten eight. It's probably ten eight diamonds, some nonsense like that. Yeah, yeah. Something like that. I think it's gonna be two pair a lot. Yeah, that makes sense. But the two the three and the four is in his range, so Yeah, agreed. Yeah. All right, guys. Well I got so much out of these uh talks. I really enjoy yeah, it. Yeah, man. Well thank you. Guys. They go a long way. I, I appreciate you coming. I appreciate you coming to King. I mean, if you guys weren't here, it'd just be me talking to myself. And let me <laughs> tell you, I do that all the time, and it's really fucking boring. <laughs> okay, well, we'll try to prevent that. So, so it's, it's real. I really appreciate both of you guys coming. Um, I really might be nice late sometimes, but I do what I can. So, I think we're gonna have more people here next week. I know Scotty will be back. I know Mike will be back. There are obviously some of the regulars. I'll be here, of course, because I have nothing else to do. Yeah, it so, seems like a chill week. It was the eclipse, and people are kind of chilling, and it's getting nice out, and it's whatever. Yeah, exactly. Not the end of the world. Yeah, so, I saw the eclipse yesterday. It was amazing. Yeah, so did I. It was awesome. It was awesome. All right, guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump, and I will talk to you on Monday, if not sooner. Okay, sweet. See you guys Monday. All Later, right, guys. Thanks a lot. Bye bye. Bye bye.